It's Monday Night Live on a Tuesday. It's the P- Powerlifting America podcast crew. We're talking all things Powerlifting America, news, updates, current events, roundtable, Julie Williams, Mike Gold, and special guests. It's Tuesday, August 22nd, 2023. I am sitting in Cluj, Romania, getting ready to kick off the sub-junior and junior world championships coming up here in two days. Um, it's. I was actually on a plane today with Gaston Paraj, the president of the IPF. He told me that there's over 650 lifters. There's over 55 countries, might be 60 countries. And I think it's like around 654 lifters total, if you want to get an exact number on that. Um, and that is the biggest junior and sub junior world championships that's ever happened combined with the classic and equipped separated from when it used to be ran together with the open and everything like that. So it was just cool every year it's getting bigger and bigger and that's awesome. Um, so yeah, we're out here. The things that want to remind you of before we get into all the heated stuff that we have we got a lot of fun topics to talk about today some some pretty funny things happened this week um in the world of powerlifting we'll bring those up and then but before we get to that i want to mention we have all of our national championships for powerlifting america all six of our national championships registration is now live on the event page of our website i've already put it in the link below in the description of this live youtube whenever i repost the higher quality version of this youtube from the recorded zoom I will, again, I will post all of the links there as well, all six of them. And just to run it down, Bench Press Nationals, January 27, 28 in Austin, Texas. Classic Open Nationals, March 14 through 16, Reno, Nevada. Um, University Nationals will be tacked on to the end of that for one full day on March 17th, also in Reno, Nevada. High School Nationals, April 19, 20, uh, 19 through the 21st. That's in New Orleans, Louisiana. And we have Age Division Nationals, May 17th through the 19th in Austin, Texas, and Equip Nationals at the end of that. Again, same place, Austin, Texas, May 19th through 20. So, and with those two, Age Division Nationals and Equip Nationals, um, those are going to be the weekend before Bench Press World Championships, which we're also hosting in Austin, Texas. So the setup for those events, for, for the Age Division Nationals, which includes sub-juniors, juniors, and masters all on the classic side, as well as everyone on the equip side. That competition that was in Scottsdale this year will be in Austin, Texas this year. And it is Austin, Texas next year, I'm saying. And it will be ran right alongside the Bench Press World Championships the weekend right before it. So it'll be the same setup as the World Championships. So it's a great venue. Aleko will be there. Aleko will be doing a barbecue. Um, Aleko is going to be doing a barbecue for like 12 days straight with between this competition and the world championships, uh, the bench press world championships. So it's going to be amazing. There's all kinds of cool stuff set up for that. And then also don't forget that after all that is said and done, after you go, after uh, we go to classic open worlds, open classic worlds in Lithuania, the U S is going to be hosting the North American powerlifting championships in Scottsdale, Arizona. So that is cool. We have a two international, two major international meets, a world championship and the North American powerlifting championships on U S soil next year in 2024. So that's going to be huge. All right. Um, so that's all the stuff that we're pushing. Um, just from the top, make sure you subscribe, make sure you follow us power underscore America on Instagram. If you subscribe on YouTube, you'll get access to all the stuff that we're going to be doing here in Romania, which will include pregame shows during weigh-ins, um, each day and then po- post competition press conferences at the end of the final session each day. We're going to be doing those all live here on YouTube. If you're following along on Instagram, we'll post the links to all that stuff. We'll also post interviews and all kinds of behind the scenes coverage, all kinds of cool stuff from here in Romania. Since I'm here, Mike Z will also be here running media with me. Um, Luke Mellon will also be helping out. And then, you know, we got our correspondents back home in the U.S., Mike Gold and Julia Williams be sending updates, telling me things to look for, maybe popping in, asking questions, maybe doing a, a, a Zoom like this once in a while for the pregame shows. You never know what you're going to get, but we're going to push hard. I'm not going to sleep for the next 12 days. So that's how we're going to run it. And last thing I want to pitch, we want to sell out all of our merch. I want to make new designs. We need cooler stuff. We need stuff for the fall, but we got to get rid of the old stuff. So it's, it's good stuff. It's, it's the standard logo. It's the black, it's the gray, it's the green. It's a couple different versions of the hat. Get that stuff from the power of the America store. The link is also below and show your support for the team, you know, rock that power of the America stuff, wherever you go. Um, shout out to Nimisha Mitha. I saw her. She was at like some kind of fitness expo this weekend. She was running around power in America on her shirt everywhere. I love that. It's great to see. Um, next time, if I, next time I'm at a meet with you, Nimisha, I'll bring you a hat. I'll bring you another shirt, something like that, because you're representing the squad. You're showing love for power in America when you're out there and do that. Tag us in your stories. We'll repost it. Speaking What's of the, the power thing, America merch, uh, I was actually wearing my power thing, America shirt in the airport the other day. Yeah. And I had, uh, somebody randomly come over to me and like, 
Oh, what is that? Uh, what's the International Powerlifting Federation? Because as a U.S. affiliate of the inter, start asking me questions. Because yeah. very interesting. Like I've obviously seen powerlifters like at airports, like when you're going to powerlifting meet, like by yeah. nationals or worlds. But this was just a random airport. I think I think it was in the Chicago airport. I forget which one it was, but it was funny. That's crazy. You've been traveling kind of a lot, but um, yeah, wear your Powerlifting America shirt wherever you are post up a story with it, um, tag us in it, we'll repost it. We want to sell off this merch. We're going to always keep those OG designs, but we're going to make some really cool new ones. We're going to get the Shield logo going. Um, and yeah, we, we might do some giveaways and things once we get that new merch up. So help us get rid of that stuff. And, you know, it's for a good cause. Support the team, show your team spirit. All right, NAPF, couple of things I want to mention that I didn't get to talk about last week really fast. So first of all, NAPF was amazing. It was the biggest NAPF ever. It was, it was all kinds of superstars were there. It was great. Um, we're still posting content from it. I'm sharing all the footage with the athletes. They're going to be posting more, more content from it as well. Um, but it's going to be even bigger next year in Scottsdale. So make sure you mark your calendar with the, as competitive as power of the American nationals is going to be this year. It's gonna be a lot of people that aren't going to make it on the world's team. They still want to go break world records. They still want to go put up a total like Jonathan Garcia did put his throw his name into the hat for possibly Sheffield considerations, possibly have the highest total in the 66s on the year. He, he finished just short of that with, with 703. He didn't quite go over 705, but that's the kind of thing you can do. Um, you can break world records. You can put your name on the mat like calf. We did, you know, for Canada. Um, and a couple of people I want to mention Joa Ayanada. She broke a world record. I want, I, we didn't mention her at all last week. Um, she kicked ass. And Alexa Spursky, um, she also kicked ass really hard last week. I think she swept with all four gold medals. Julia, you want to mention either of those two? Because I know you're working on an NAPF recap article. There's a lot that goes into it. There's 104 athletes. We want to cover everyone, all the different things that happen. So it's going to take a minute to get it posted. But Julia, go ahead and, and hit on that for us. Yeah, so um, Joa broke a bench world record. Um, you know, amazingly strong lifter. She was in a really tight battle. And it was really fun to watch. Um, those, those kind of, um, those lifts are all, you know, big lifts are always compelling, but when it's in the context of a battle that makes it even more exciting. And there were a lot of battles there. Um, other, uh, lifters who broke world records, um, off the top of my head, um, I believe Lillian set a bench world record, um, in the M twos and, um, Melissa Copeland got, uh, got a redemption and got that squat world record um in the m1s and then yeah as you said um alexa swept um a few lifters swept and that's a very very hard thing to do because there were a lot of competitive athletes this year and um you know to be able to win a gold medal in each lift really shows um how complete of a lifter you are you know that's not to to discount someone who has like an amazing deadlift or anything, but it does say a lot about um, how well-rounded you are. So it's a, it's an amazing accomplishment, um, you know, and it's an interesting thing to track just on top of, you know, total gold medals. Yeah. There were a lot of world records. Um, Julia's got them all mapped out. We're going to post an article on that. We'll post pictures and everything along with the article, like we did with the NAPF preview article. But before we post that, we're going to post the junior and sub junior world championships preview um, because that's coming up in two days. So, so in the next 24 hours, we'll have that up. So you'll know everything that you need to watch for, for the junior and sub junior world championships. Um, and we'll post that on our Instagram story, power of the underscore America, and we'll link it. It'll be on the website as well. Also, we dropped a podcast with Chelsea Inamore. Um, she's one of the 84 plus uh, she's one of the 84 plus sub junior superstars that's going to be competing here in the world championships. I did an interview with her. She's amazing, super smart. She gives all kinds of analysis about the world championships in Malta. She break down, she breaks down Luella's performance, even at the North American championships, the, the girl that she'll be going against here at the uh, world championships in Romania. And so it's a great episode. Go check that out for sure. I'll make sure to post a link. It's already in the sub junior and junior worlds playlist that has everything you need for uh, sub junior and junior everything we've ever done with them on youtube is all in that playlist on youtube so go find that all right next what do you guys want to talk about next let's get into the current events of the week so first thing first um king of lifts did has done you know basically we're a recap show for king of the lips <laughs> um where we're gonna recap you know king of the lips is is the newsmaker uh they they dropped the best sound bites they got they got the best interviews 
So we're going to always, especially when our athletes or when something re related to Poverty in America is on there, we're going to recap it on here. So for the junior and sub junior world championships, Joe Whiteley went on with, with Ryan and they broke down all the highlights of the juniors. Um, and it was mostly all just the classic juniors. So what we're going to do is with the article that, that Julia is writing that we're all actually working on and researching for, we're going to break down all of the categories, not just the juniors, but also the sub juniors and not just classic, but also the equip side. Um, but in that art, in that, those episodes, Joe Whiteley made a, a really good point about open powerlifting. And I want to say it here because in the link of every single YouTube episode that we have since, since like one of our first, maybe three, four interviews that we did, I've put the link to support open powerlifting in on our podcast and on our YouTube, because it's really important. And she's making a plea for help here. They don't have enough help. So go out there and do something. Um, at least if you don't want to do something with open power thing, donate some money to it so that they can hire people so that they can uh, upgrade their systems and things like this. But Joe Whiteley is an absolute hero. She was talking in this episode. I mean, she does so many things. She has a real job. She does commentary. She does IPF social media. She writes articles for Barben. And she mentioned in this episode that every day she wakes up and checks in on open power thing and handle some business with open power thing every single day. I mean, that's dedication. We need more people like that. She's a hero. Joe Whiteley for president, uh, president of America, the country, not the Federation. Um, and, uh, hats off to Joe and hats off to Ryan. And hats yes. off yeah, I don't care. She, she's doing God's work. We need open power thing. We use open power thing on this, on this podcast, on every podcast out there. They're all using open power lifting. I can't do I can't, you know, even basically get through my day without having to pull up open power thing like three, four times. All right. So I've donated, I'm going to make another, I got a recurring donation. I think going, if I don't, I'm going to double check. I'm going to get that. Uh, I've definitely donated in the past where I think I got a recurring donation going with them, but everyone go out and do it. We've got the link in all of these YouTubes. So um, there's no excuse for that. And she's making a case. Also, if you're good with technology, spreadsheets, things like this, volunteer for your fed to, to help them out, put it in a format. She's talking about getting, results in a pdf and it's like a, a, fe a federation or someone from a federation sends the final results in a pdf you can't do anything with a pdf you know how hard that is julia we know how hard that is because what do we get from the north american power Team championships oh my god we got a pdf and that's partially <laughs> why our recap article is taking so long because we got a pdf and eventually I did get the spreadsheet and we're going to, you know, and now it's going to make it a lot easier for us to break things down and double check our math and do all kinds of stuff. But if you're out there and you're running meets or you're in a federation, you want to do something that's honestly, this shouldn't be that hard to, to get a spreadsheet and, and submit it to open power thing. So just someone, please, if you're in your fed or don't complain, if no one, if no one's out there doing it and because they're going to continue to get the results up quickly for federations like ours, where we use lifting cast and open lifter and you can just boom upload it quickly so all right anyway any you guys have any other things you want to say about joe whiteley and the the saint that she is uh i don't actually know her personally i mean i met her i've met her before you met her uh, in malta she, at least right and turkey yeah, yeah so she, she is the uh i guess i would say the ultimate powerlifting nerd like she yeah. she's my uh she's my uh mentor <laughs> yes she's all of ours julia yeah. Yeah, she's she's a great writer too. Um, she writes for Barbend. Uh, I think you mentioned that, and uh, does commentary as well. Uh, that you know, it's it's just really professional. It's really well done. She knows everything. I mean, about every lifter, it's it's insane. I don't know if she just like things work differently for her, and she just has thirty hours in the day, and we only have twenty four or what. But it's you know, it's phenomenal. So she's just yeah. a real adult. Like she handles business. She's a real pro. So anyway, um, hats off to her. And um, if you see her ever, like I'm going to see her here at, at these world championships, I think she'll be here. Just going to buy her a beer or something, you know? All right. Um, next current events topic that is trending. And by trending, I mean 2 million views on Instagram. And that is Lila Cooper. Um, she's a sub junior equipped lifter and we made a recap reel for her from the North American Power Team Championships, and it has absolutely blown up this week. In a matter of the last 24 hours ish, it's got like something like 1.5 million views. It was sitting at like 400,000 or something. All of a sudden, all these haters started coming in and leaving comments 
And I noticed the, the account is blowing up with comments from a bunch of haters. But guess who's laughing all the way to the bank? Lila Cooper. Um, because now her reel is the second highest viewed reel in the history of Power of Teen America. Only Joy Joy's Fitness, Joy Reinfleisch, who's here, who will be here competing in Romania. Maybe, maybe she can get a reel going this week that can top it. But um, right now, Lila is a front runner since Joy's recap reel from Scottsdale. So way to go, Lila. Just tune out the haters. Like we said, forget about them. They don't know what they're talking about. It's a bunch of loser scrubs. And and don't worry about them. You know you're a superstar. And she knows. I've been DMing with her the whole time. She's laughing at all their comments. Um, it's funny. Um, it sucks that women get treated like this on social media. You know, it's 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 horrible. But hopefully, and in this case, she has super thick skin. And, you know, and in the end, she's just excited that her reel is blowing up like this. It's amazing. Um, Julia, you have anything you want to add to this? Because I know you reposted about it this week. Yeah, so I think it's great, one, that um, she's getting all these views just as a female lifter. I think that that's phenomenal. But also as an equipped lifter, um, in the powerlifting community, especially, you know, right now, there's, um, it's kind of like in fashion to hate on equipped lifting. But it turns out people outside the community just want to see big weights lifted. And I think that that um, is you know, that's, that's being shown here. So, um, I, I'm, I'm really happy about this. Uh, equip lifting is not dead. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's my take. I know, I know, uh, Mike might not agree with me. So <laughs> go ahead, Mike Gold. What do you yeah. think? And I, first off, I think it's amazing that this reel has 2 million views. I actually, when I forgot who I initially saw that posted about it, but I actually couldn't find the reel initially. Uh, Cause I thought it was like the, like the most recent, one of the most recent reels, but it wasn't. So I went back and found it, but yeah, 2 million views is pretty crazy. Um, I don't know what you said. Joy's the one that had the most, how many views was that? It was like four, 4.6 million or something. Almost okay, so that, that's hard to break, but um, yeah, it's a hard one, but yeah, no, I mean, equipped isn't dead. That's it just, it hasn't grown with raw. It's stagnant. So um, I mean, if 2 million people are seeing this, so that means a high percentage of those have absolutely, well, a high percentage of them have no idea what powerlifting is. But yeah. even the ones that do know what powerlifting is, a lot of them don't know what equipped powerlifting is. So it's definitely uh, interesting. I haven't read through the comments yet. I might have to sit down with some popcorn. Um, and read. The comments. Brace yourself. Yeah. Like what? any woman on social media, the comments are horrific. Um, at least they're mostly just about her lifts. They're not like about her, like her okay. physical appearance or anything like this. But um, I mean, it's crazy too, that they're saying that she's like, some of the comments are like, Oh, like, you know, typical stuff, like no lift was completed or like, these are all like, Oh yeah. Or these aren't very big lifts or whatever. But listen, this is a 57 kilo sub junior. I think she's like 17. I think she's yeah. 17 or 16. I think she's 17 years old. Um, she's squatting 325 pounds. Um, she benches 143. She went for 159 and, and usually hits it in training, but missed it. Um, and then she deadlifted 303 pounds. I mean, for 57 kilo, like 16, 17 year old girl, this is, these are awesome numbers for, for Lila. And she has a great personality. She puts herself out there. Um, if you go to the NAPF highlight on our profile, there's some interviews I did with her in between disciplines and after, and she's just a young superstar. And that's what equip needs. Equip needs people like Lila Cooper because she could be the Joy Joy's fitness of Equipped, you know, mm -hmm. in the future. And, you know, and Joy has inspired. She's Lila is a big fan of Joy. Joy, if you listen to this and you're not already following Lila, which I think you already are, um, give her a follow because she loves you. And so does everyone, honestly. But, um, but yeah, super cool. Uh, I'm happy for her. And again, it sucks that it's these negative comments that drive these numbers like this. Um, but at least I think most powerlifters know that like they don't really care when people criticize their bench arch. You know what I mean? It's like we're just laughing at these I mean, losers. Who, who cares what non-powerlifters say? I mean, with the yeah. exception of Gaston, he cares what non-powerlifters say. But in general, like, yeah, if they're if they're watching, it's that's good. You want them to watch. That's what matters. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, I mean, there's no there's no such thing as bad publicity. You have two million people that just saw your reel. That means you. I'm sure even with all the haters, a lot of people probably 
saw it and liked it. She probably got followers. She's going to get interactions. I don't know. I'm saying, yeah, it sucks. It's such a bad all the negative comments, but these yeah. are the these are the people who are leaving these comments are the same people who will watch Jamal pull uh, 1,100 pounds and be like, oh, it's sumo. Oh, you use straps like that kind of stuff. While they can't even pull 405 and they don't they they've never entered a competition and they never will. So it's it's unimportant, yeah. but we may as well you know profit from it. So yeah, I agree. It, it has 18,000 likes. <laughs> 18,000 likes on this on this post. So. I mean, the vast majority of people are all here for you, Lila. Also, the story of that competition, 57 kilo, she went, she was going up against Brooklyn Mazuka, who beat her on body weight at high school nationals. And she came out and she loaded up this, I think it was a second deadlift. And they both missed their third. And she, after she pulled her second deadlift, got Lila got super emotional because I think she knew that she didn't have a lot left in the tank. And she could just see this happening to her all over again where she lost on body weight britain uh brooklyn mazuka came out and beat her on her last deadlift at high school nationals in scranton and um this time though brooklyn also missed and lila won and so just a cool redemption story the two of them are all both badass we got to mention brooklyn she's also a badass as well i can't wait to see the rivalry of these girls as they grow up and you know move into the open and become the next uh, superstars on the equip side, like, you know, Kimmy Johnson and, um, all of our, all of our superstars over there. So anyway, it's going to be cool. Um, yeah, Kelsey McCarthy and, uh, Taylor LaChapelle. Those are our, our current, like ultra badass superstar women. Um, and I think we're seeing the, the, the future of them here, um, on the NAPF team and how cool to do it at the North American Politics championships on the international platform. So anyway, hats off to you, Lila. We love you. You're a badass. You're awesome. Um, and yeah, so, all right, next. Let's keep it moving. That was a good, positive, uplifting story. Powerful in America. We're getting 2 million views on an equipped sub junior. That's crazy. No, like no one would have thought that would have been possible. In fact, the guys, the, the equipped coaches were asking me, do something to make equipped pop off. And I didn't do shit. I, I made the reel. I posted it. The haters did it for us. Lila did it for us with their badass lifting. And she promoted the reel as well. So really good. All right. Anyway, next topic. A spicy one. The next generation of quip lifting. Jordan Coomer saying in the chat. All right. This one is controversial. Okay. And it brings us into a topic that we've been wanting to talk about for a while. And that is supplements. But I'm going to open it with a question. I'm going to open the conversation with a question. And with this question, I think you might know what I'm referring to. But the question is, who the fuck is from New Jersey? <laughs> Mike Gold, who's from New Jersey? Um, absolutely nobody. But um, <laughs> absolutely nobody. But in all oh, seriousness, um, yeah. So in some recent events, right, there was recently a uh, whole drama which resulted in an IG live between Kevin Papa from One Ten and some I don't know kid from some supplement supplement company I never heard of where the kid um, ripped off his his um, formula and started selling his own pre-workout, which whatever, it's always gonna happen in the industry. That in itself wouldn't make for so much drama, but then the kid that you never do, which is when you cheat or when you copy something, you try to keep it on the down low. You don't go on social media and say, I'll debate you on the topic. <laughs> Oh, because you Lord. don't know what you're talking about. And then you debate it with somebody who does know what they're talking about. It usually doesn't end up well. So, um, I mean, you can check it out and watch it. It's like a long video if you want. But the reason why we're bringing this up is not just because of the individual drama here, right? There's tons of supplement companies out there. We don't specifically care for individual ones. But the point is supplements, which is something that is used by most people in the gym and uh, powerlifters, especially, um, they can be pretty important. Like I would say most people are taking pre-workout. That's like the, the most basic one and wherever you get it from, that's your choice, but make sure you're buying from companies that are third party tested, have it on the label because if not, you can get popped. Um, 
we meant to discuss this. I don't know, even remember exactly how long ago it was, many, but many we meant to discuss yeah. this damn near every week, and it keeps getting bumped to the next week. Right. What well, it started? What was like two months ago, right? Yeah. When? Okay. So, if you don't already know this, um, around two months ago, I don't know the exact dates now. I could be wrong, but around two months ago, um, there was news that Chandler Babb had been suspended. Now, nobody knows the full story, but what it seems is, at least what she says, is that there was something in her pre-workout, which was a banned substance. And since she was in, I believe, was it the Caribbean for, for medical school? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the Caribbean. So she didn't have access to everything that you would necessarily have if you're in your home country, which you can just go to your either your local like supplement shop or just get it on Amazon. I mean, I don't know. I feel like you could still order on Amazon to the Caribbean. But either way, that's not, that's not the point. The point is, so she didn't just randomly take something. What she did was she went through the ingredient list and she made sure that each of the individual ingredients were not on any banned list. Not on the, like WADA has a list of things that are banned, right? So obviously there's like products that are banned, but there's also like individual ingredients. So you have to be careful when you're taking any supplement or really anything. Like, I mean, it could be in the simple energy drinks. It could be in anything. It could be, so, it could be in protein. It can be any supplement. Yeah. It could be in any, meaning any, obviously you're more likely to have it in some sort of like thing, like pre-workout that has a lot of ingredients, especially for a lot of people don't really know what most of the ingredients are for what they do, but just what they are. But anything that is like made in a, in a uh, warehouse that makes like supplements or anything like that can also be tainted, which is yeah. why it's not good enough to just check the ingredients. You have to, if you are a competitive powerlifter, a competitive athlete, you really, there's no excuse not to be buying from third party tested brands. There's many of them I'm saying, we're not going to list them all now, but there are plenty of brands that are third party tested. They'll have it on the label, buy from them. That's the basic outline. Yeah. Go ahead, Julia. Um, also, you know, she made a post about this and there were a lot of people in her comments who were, you know, suddenly, um, you know, biochemistry PhDs, um, these, some of these ingredients on the label, there's many different names of them. And sometimes they're, you know, only slightly changed. And it's very, very hard um, to figure out if um, something is banned or if it's, you know, getting around a ban or not. Um, and so you can always go on the WADA website and look up things. Uh, I would look up every you know i would look up the thing online and see if there's any other names of it and look up all of those on the water website um you know just to make sure and don't take something if if you know you're in doubt i mean you can just you know you can take coffee you can just drink coffee you can buy something off bulk supplements and um you know or or any supplement store that sells wholesale and make your own um that's third party tested like mike said and you know, that's the real solution here. I would move though to maybe have um, WADA, you know, put out a little more information on the substances that are in their banned substance list. I think that that would be a good idea. A few people suggested that when this actually happened, I think that might take a lot of work, but you know, um, we don't want people getting popped. And I think that, you know, especially if it's something like a pre-workout where they're not even trying to gain an unfair advantage. So yeah. that might be something to push for in terms of, you know, WADA putting out a little more information on this type of stuff. Um, but beyond that, um, when I was in the Cayman Islands, uh, there was a supplement table there. And um, even the people at the supplement table, most of those products were third-party tested, but I think there was one where um, someone had taken it, um, not not entirely uh, related. Like it was, it wasn't. This didn't take place in the Cayman Islands, but someone took that supplement and um, received a six month ban because there was something in it that was um, that was a banned substance, and they they didn't know that. So even if a company has their supplements at a tested powerlifting meet, that doesn't mean that they're, you know, necessarily okay to take. As you've seen by this example with Kevin Papa and, and this kid, anyone can pretty much make a supplement um, line and you have no idea what's in it unless it's tested. So 
you know, don't get popped for something stupid, please. Yeah, I think it's really important. We, you know, we're here on the eve of the sub junior and junior world championships. And I think this is the the demographic that is the least experienced with this kind of thing. So Chelsea Inamore, shout out to the Poverty America podcast episode that we did with her that's dropped. You can go listen to it. She, she mentioned that she's not doing anything. She's not doing any pre-workouts. She's not doing any of that stuff because she doesn't know. She doesn't need it. First of all, she's young. She's energetic. She doesn't need a pre-workout. She doesn't need caffeine. She doesn't even drink coffee. But on top of that, she's like, I'm not putting just anything in my body that I don't know what it is. And like I said, these 17 these year old kids are smarter than you think. Um, there, she is super, super smart. Definitely go listen to that interview. But I mean, I can't believe how smart these kids are. Mike, God damn. I was dumb at 17 compared to these kids but she's like going to be a med student or whatever, uh, super smart in science and all this stuff. But listen, there's a, there's a shortcut way to do this. Um, you know, Chandler, she looked up every single ingredient. And the thing was, was that they had missed, they had labeled something, a different ingredient that, that it's like a different form of the same thing that is on the banned substance list. She put out a lot of information about this. There's a big, is a, it's a big, um, call for awareness about overall supplements. My thing if I were taking supplements, I would probably look at what someone like Keiko is taking because we know that man's been tested a billion times with blood, you know, and I would, I would look at something that a lifter that, you know, is tested over and over and over and over and over again, that has been there like Taylor Atwood, you know, you know, Taylor Atwood's getting tested over and over and over again. He's never missing a test. He's never failing a test. So if you're going to take a shortcut, follow those trusted leaders in our sport. Don't, doesn't mean use whatever your favorite influencer is using, you know, because there's out, there's, a, there's, there's people out there going to worlds, world championships who are using all different kinds of supplements every other week. They're trying something different. Don't go with those, go with the people that, you know, are tried and true who've been tested over and over and over again. And that have continued to pass. Um, and, and that's, that would be my two cents on that. Mike, you got something else you want to add to this? Yeah. I mean, it's a little late, but I mean, as somebody who doesn't, mind saying what they want to say i'm just i find this a little curious um so we we mentioned the comments so i'm just going to get to the point which is that i have no idea what happened here i don't know if what she's saying is true i don't know that i'm not saying it is i'm not saying it isn't i just find it very weird that like on this post specifically uh the comments were overwhelmingly positive like oh it sucks it's happened whatever i, I mean i just know that in all the um big failures like that I remember uh it was very different so now obviously not all are the same right for example um I would say the biggest one I remember was when Kelly Brenton popped for everything and blamed it on his Canadian pro protein now yeah. in that scenario obviously I don't have proof it wasn't his Canadian protein but um I would say with like 99 percent confidence that his Canadian protein didn't have like five different like oral steroids and SARMs and whatever. So in that scenario, I think it's pretty easy to not believe him. But there've also been other situations like the most recent one before this was the Anna Rosa Castellane Anna Rosa. one where it wasn't the same thing as here. And there the uh, reaction was exactly the opposite. It was, nice. you didn't see a lot of lifters being like, oh wow, it sucks, this happens, blah, blah, blah. It was more like, oh, you're a cheater or whatever. And like, from a ton of people. And you know what? Honestly, I don't really care. Nobody, I don't care. The lifters, nobody cares what some random say because the bottom line is they're just going to believe what they want to believe. It's the same people who, who will say like, oh, there's no way X, Y, Z, Ross, Jesus, whatever. There's no way they're natty because they do something yeah. that you don't think is possible. The same so those one that's commenting on Lila Cooper's post. Yeah, yeah. Or there's like a couple, there's a couple that I, there's a couple of like these trolls that I, I actually recognize because like I see them in comment sections all the time being like, do that naturally now. Like, there's like, like, I recognize the names even like trolls. Like I see them like, oh, okay. Um, but I'm talking about, about more like high level lifters that the reactions were very different between the two. So I just find it a little strange because like Anna Rosa also, like, it wasn't like she was like this up and coming lifter who had just like popped off and then like it failed the test. Like she had been at the top level for a decade and she hadn't failed any other tests. So tested a bunch of I times. I find it. Yeah. Tested tons of times. Uh, been at world championships. I don't know how many times, but like maybe like seven or eight times yeah. uh, podiuming at a lot of them, like in the IPF hall of fame. So I find it, a, I would say a little hypocritical, honestly, reaction, but whatever. I was just. Okay. Mike, 
uh, given his hot take like months later. <laughs> when the whole topic. Well, I wanted to give this take two months ago. Yeah, 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 yeah no, but, it's uh, good. It's. I think. I think the thing is, is like Chandler's story was very convincing. Like she re- walked through all of the ingredients. She had gone through, and there was clearly wait, something. Wait, late, wait, let me. Le- I'm just, one let, me, thing. let me just finish yeah, real quick. Yeah. There was clearly one thing on the, on the supplement that on the pre-workout that she was taking that was on the banned substance list in a different formulation, like under a different name. And she, she found it and that's what it was. I, I don't know the details. I'm, I don't know enough about drug testing to know, like, was it a stimulant? What was it exactly? I know it wasn't like testosterone, you know what I mean? So, um, it, it wasn't like, you know, what you would consider like steroids, um, but can be it's on the banned substance list, so it is what it is. But anyway, go ahead, Mike. No, but I just I want to clarify. My hot take is nothing to do with the individual lifter. I have I am by no means saying that Chandler Babb yeah. took anything, not at all. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying it's just weird. Like sometimes reactions are very strange. Like to give an example for people who, who like have some sports knowledge, but maybe not powerlifting. Like there are certain people, for example, like David Ortiz, who failed a drug test. Yet for some reason everybody loves him and yeah. thinks nothing happened. And then you have other people like Barry Bonds, who never actually failed the test. Barry Bonds was on a list. He never failed a single test. He he played before there was before he was actually even banned. Yeah. Yet he's hated by everybody. Uh, he's not in the Hall of Fame, even though he's probably yeah. the best baseball player of all time. Yeah. So I I just I, I like consistency. So I well, think it's I everybody. I agree with, everybody's I agree with the public. Uh, it's everybody's yeah, forever and Barry Bonds. No, I'm just joking. I don't well, really care about baseball. Okay, wait, wait. <laughs> he, he got blackballed. He, 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 his know, last I, season, I, his last season in baseball, he was one of the, he, he was one of the best hitters in baseball, and no team signed him. He literally got blackballed. I'm 100. I'm 100 joking. I, I honestly don't care about uh, baseball, but I think everyone should be shown some grace. But go, Julia. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think that there's very obvious um, reason why this happened. And we can also look at uh, the Jesse Norris situation to, to see got kind of more evidence of that. And that, that is because it wasn't an anabolic substance. And I think that, you know, this does happen with like, it just goes back to the Kevin Papa thing where anyone can make a pre-workout. These things are in there. There's a million different names for them. You know, it's, more than likely an honest mistake. The advantage you gain from some of these things, it, it might be a little bit, but it's very temporary if at all. And it's just not the same as somebody, you know, getting popped for nandrolone or testosterone. It's just like a completely different thing where you don't usually like trip and fall onto a syringe, you know, like it's, it's, it's just, it's yeah. very different. So, um, I mean, I think that that's part of the reason, um, you know, I also think, you know, Chandler is a very, um, she's a likable person too. I mean, and I do think that has to do with it. And I think, yep. you know, if you go making enemies, um, you know, people are going to be, to be less tolerant of you um, in your mistakes. But, but I, I, I think that this is, is genuinely just, um, you know, it, People view being popped for a pre-workout very, very differently or being popped for a stimulant very differently than they do anabolic steroids. And to, to be honest, rightfully so. Yeah. And, and I mean, the whole thing is everyone could be in this situation, you know, like you don't, you don't know, like you taking, I mean, unless you're not taking any supplements at all, if you, even, even if you're, if, even if it says it's third party tested or whatever, there's still some chance that it gets tainted some way, somehow some, something happens it's just one of these things of like, I think you got to really reserve judgment. And if you know the person, then you know them. And I think a lot of people knew Chandler. She had just been to Sheffield. She had just been to the world Championships, just won the 69 world championships. Anna is from Brazil, which is not a major powerlifting uh, powerhouse country. They don't have as big a fanfare. So Anna, and I don't know what she popped for either. Maybe that was a part of the reason was that she popped for something else. I know I was sad when I heard Anna, Anna Rosa Castellane pop because she's like a hero. She's like one of the, the queens of the sport, you know, um, her battles with Kimberly Walford and stuff like epics, uh, epic stuff in the past. So, um, it's sad. I think we should always show people some grace with this stuff. Don't just assume that like they're, you know, guilty until proven innocent. I mean, it's just a lot of tests. There's all kinds of flaws. There can be problems. I mean, I just, it, it's a tough situation. And like, uh, Tristan saying in the chat, the supplement industry is part of the powerlifting 
that makes me the most nervous to be honest. And it's true. It just really, it really does. And when I see you'd peep these, when I go around in the warm up room, especially like at high school nationals, um, and these kids have these, these pre-workouts with these crazy ass names, shit I've never heard of, like, like psycho, uh, animation on the packaging and stuff. I'm just like, that just looks like drugs. Like it, it just, it just can't be legit. Like it just looks like a, a, a company that's just totally, you know, phony baloney. And, um, that's what this Kevin Papa thing really hit, hit up this week. Anyone can make these supplements and you don't know what's in them. So just be super cautious, especially the juniors and sub juniors. Also the IPF and the wake in the wake of Chandler's, um, failure, drug test failure. They posted an article about this. It's on the IPF website. You can go check it out. Um, there's all kinds of, you know, things that you can do to, to look up the ingredients. Like we're talking about, if you just need caffeine, you can just buy caffeine from bulk supplements or someplace like that. And it's probably a less chance it's going to get tainted than if you're taking something that has like unicorn fairy dust proprietary blend. You know what I mean? Like you're going to be, uh, watch out for a proprietary blend. That's a definite, definite red flag. But anyway, we've beat this dead horse enough. Um, anything you guys want to say, I just want to say, like, I know that Kevin Papa thing went viral this week. Um, that's just wild, man. Like who, who's going to jump on a debate on a lot Instagram live like this? Like what world are we living in now? Like, like, like you're just going to walk face first into something like that on Instagram live. Like I just, I just, it was, it was crazy. So, um, I mean, hats off to both of them for, I mean, it, to be honest, it was entertaining. So I would love for like my gold, go live and debate someone this week and just be calling them out and shit. Like it, it, it was good entertainment, but, um, man, it really did just make me cringe about the whole supplement industry. And I do want pop team America to get a supplement sponsor. So if you're out there and you're a legit company, come to us. We need a, we need a supplement sponsor. So, um, let's get that going. Cause you know, we, we do, we still, we need a pre-workout that works. And that is also not going to get our lifters popped at worlds, you know, yeah. like we need that. And we need, we need a company that can come, come to the table and be like, yo, we have this, we, and it's your, we can guarantee your lifters aren't going to get popped from this. So that would be great to have. Um, but anyway, supplement industry is crazy. Um, I don't know enough about it, but I like Chelsea Enamore's advice. Listen to her podcast if you want the secrets of how to be a beast. All right, let's keep it moving. Mike, you got, or you guys have any final thoughts on that? Do you want to keep it moving? Yeah, I, I don't have any final thoughts other than, you know, I mean, I, that debate was really the Dunning-Kruger effect in in action there, so. <laughs> Let's not get sued by anybody and call anyone out, but that, that shit was crazy. That, I think we can definitely say that. My gold? I'm good. Okay. <laughs> and just so people know, when I was saying who the fuck is from New Jersey, that was a quote from the kid in the in the thing he was calling out Kevin by basically saying you're from New Jersey. Who's from New Jersey. Like that was his argument. <laughs> so, uh, if you didn't get the reference, be honest, be honest, I think it was his, uh, most coherent argument of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh, we got a good laugh out of this. All right. So I am going to next up, I'm going to share, uh, my screen here more from the, King of the Lifts recap podcast, which is the Monday Night Live. Let's run this real quick. I remember you telling me about Russ in the warm up room, and you're like, dude, he is such a social media influencer because he, when he was back there, and this is kind of pre 2019, this is all pretty, he was ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. He had people with cameras floating around him. Yeah, it was like he had his own team there. There was like cameras. He was doing interviews in between. And I'm like, this guy just has a celebrity presence. Nobody was doing this though. No. I, and I don't mean just in the 83s. I mean, in all the IPF worlds, nobody brought their own camera team and brought their people and doing interviews. Like, how did that go? While battling Brett freaking Gibbs. In the, in the fight of his life on the other side of the world in Sweden. And he had his people, are, you were telling me he was sitting down just chilling and they were just filming him. Like, it's like documentary style, not exactly. just for the interview, but literally. I was over and I'm like, man, that's pretty cool. I want to have a camera team like so I can re record my world's performance. 
Well, yeah, like I mean, people complain. They're like, oh man, he's so corny for doing stuff like that. But I'm like, look at where he is now. Like, can't really hate. And this is, that's where I was going with this is like, look at 2023. How many people now show up with camera teams? Like exactly. at Sheffield, you know, Taylor had people, like people bring people to follow them, record the moment. And how many people now have YouTube channels where you mm -hmm. have your own videographers and whatnot? Like Delaney, Taylor, they have Sierra, who's who's phenomenal. But um, a lot of people have like people they bring in. And now it's more common. And this is how you get sponsorships. This is how you sell merch. This is how oh. you do your thing. Especially in a sport like powerlifting where it's mainly self-funded. Like you need to advertise yourself in order to get those sponsors to help fund your trips and whatnot. The other thing I really like is I love how Powerlifting America is doing the athlete interviews at international meets. Like, I absolutely love those. I want to see more nations do it. I want the CPU to start doing that. Like, honestly, I would be totally cool if the CPU raises everyone's fee, let's say, $10. Like, I don't know how many members we have, but let's say we raise every $10 for every person so that we can start doing, like, media stuff like that on the bigger screen. Just to, It starts adding more legitim legitimacy to your federation and to the sport, too. It's it, the thing is for powerlifting America, they have so many lifters who are going to worlds that are for really real contending. Whereas for Canada, you know, obviously like our 83s are strong and, and just won a medal and Bobby, you know, there'd be high expectations for yourself as well. Um, if should you be going to 2024 or whoever ends up, whatever that hell this all shakes up and there'll be like Jess and whoever the heck. Yeah. But there isn't there isn't going to be like, I think some of the members might be like, how much are you raising our fees for like three people? Whereas Powerlifting America is like every single one of our people are metal contenders and the amount of digital content and assets. So I don't know. You make a good point though. However, you could battle back and say, yeah, turn those three contenders into eight. How do we do that? We need to start. But it also makes it more motivating for people to get there. Like, look, look what's happening at the top of our sport. Because I think, I feel like sometimes you got to make those investments to show people, like, what it can look like, you know? And then I feel it'll be more motivating for lifters. I mean, like, you know, I want to get to this point. I want to be that athlete who's having these, like, high production interviews, who's, you know, it just, like... It looks cool, like simply said. Yeah. I mean, Russ came on here and Russ said, that's one of the main reasons I came over. It's just the the amount of, you know, work the media team put in for Powerlifting America. Same with Petrie. He's like some of those, some of the work, not not like just Powerlifting America. Um, IPF does those interviews as well and SBD and blah, 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 right? There's a lot of people in the world. But however, on the federation level, they could step up. If all the feder national federations could, I, not everyone's got the money, but. Right, there's so many smaller federations, which is just gonna be feasible. But if you start getting more and more, it just makes it easier for more to do it. And it is, it is a good point to make where, okay, I got you. We don't have a lot of people contending necessarily. Well, we got, we got a, we got a handful of people. We're getting more, like Canada's getting more competitive on the stage like it's happening slowly we're getting there because i remember um steph in the 52s when you were there at worlds she medaled for canada obviously marie t won uh bittner's won like we've had like winners bittner's won a couple like mm -hmm. we've had and nick obviously got a bronze like we've had some medal and another uh britney 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 schlater yeah thank you britney schlater in the 84 plus uh world champion i mean we we've it's there but yeah, to build, it, 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 it's like the old expression, it costs money to make money. Exactly. So so if you just sit back and be like, I don't think we're there yet, it's like, well, how do we get there, though? 100%. We, we got to gotta move. Investments to, get, to get our country up there. It's like a casting call to recruit. Mm -hmm. You know, make people excited to want to power lift. First off the top from that, um, shout out Kathleen, man. Thank you. Thank you for, for mentioning our name. Um, got to meet him, got to see him absolutely boss up at the North American Power Team Championships. It was awesome to see. And um, I'm glad that he appreciates it. And I'm I'm glad also Ryan Lapidat mentions, you know, that we played the clip before on one of the episodes, Monday Night Live, 
not the band episode, but the one right after that, I think, um, from Russ, where he basically said, you know, it was a big part of why he's coming over. He likes what we're doing with the with the post meet press conferences, things like this. Um, the pushback, I would say, though, on what Ryan was talking about is, I think I think you got to do it for every lifter. I think you got to make it standard in the sport. I mean, um, you see press you see press conferences in all other sports. They don't just interview Patrick Mahomes. Um, like I was watching all the press conferences that they were doing for the um, for for all the training camp stuff. They interview everybody like random mix of, of athletes, you know? And I think it's especially nice to spotlight athletes that don't always get the shine or can't create their own shine. Um, cause they already have their own social media channels and things like this as well. So I think there's no reason why you can't do it for basically everyone. Um, especially if you make it onto a, U, uh, an international team, like in our case, if you make it onto U S national team, boom, I think you've earned it the right to get like an interview or a press conference, especially at the world championships. NAPF was tough. We had 104 athletes. We couldn't interview every single person. Just logistically, it's impossible to do it in five days. But Mike Gold, I can see you want to say something. What do you want to, what do you want to add? Yeah. So, I mean, I listened to that whole podcast. I think part of the point uh, Caffrey was making is that when, what you just said, if, if you make it onto the U.S. national team, like you deserve to be interviewed. Everyone should hear you. What he was saying is that which is true is that the US, especially in the open, but so we have a very dominant team. So it's possible we could lose a team at some point, but at the moment, every single one of the lifters who makes it to the US team, not only is deserving, but like legitimately is already like competitive for a medal. So he was saying that like inherently when you make it to the team, a lot of them will be already superstars just in their own right. But even the ones who aren't are like legitimately like competitive where they have the numbers to be superstars. They just might not have specifically like popped off on social media or maybe they don't give yeah. it yeah. as much attention. Saying it's a little harder, like for them, he was referring to the CPU where like um, even when they nominate a full team, like half the team is going to be, let's say, in the B flight or whatever. And people are going to care a little bit less. I don't yeah. I, I agree with you. I don't think that means that they shouldn't be getting interviewed and they shouldn't be, I I agree. We should interview everyone and we should give everyone like their time and attention. It's just, it would be more difficult. Like you said, like at the NAPF, it's more difficult when you have just a a big, like a range of lifters. It's harder to get, not that they're not deserving. It's just harder to get the um, viewer's attention. Like you said, like in like training camp, they're interviewing everyone, but the bottom line is like the, the interviews that people watch. Yeah. They watch the Mahomes interview. They watch Mahomes the Kelsey. Gets, interview. Mahomes gets reposted. They watch, right. They, they yeah. repost the, the, the Chandler Jones interview. Like that's what, that's what they're reposting. Like they don't really repost like the backup safety. Who's tr- fighting for a spot. Well, okay. Yeah. 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 yeah they don't repost really it. Really unless they say something crazy. Really unless they say something crazy. crazy thing. Right. You got to say something out of pocket. <laughs> yeah. But, so, yeah, I mean, we should do it for everyone. It's just, it's hard. That's yeah. To the extent that it's feasible, I think you should. Um, one yeah. issue they brought up was like money. We don't have the money. We don't have the resources. It just takes, you know, like, like no one really put up the money for us to do it in Austin. Um, it was an idea that Mike Z- Zawalinski and I had. And, you know, we just, we had extra banners. We threw it in the room. I had some lights. Mike bought some, some mics and whatnot. The rest is history. You know, it just takes effort. That's what it takes. Um, yeah. And we were there. I mean, I would have been in, in, in I, also not just press conferences. Like that's, that's something that's obviously very important. And that's definitely the thing that caught Russ's eye. Um, but just like, we already talked about the Lila Cooper, 2 million views on the reel that we made from the footage that I shot when I was sitting, when I was there at the North American championships, little things like that, you know, it's like, um, that doesn't take a lot. They, Canada had people there. You just got to put a cell phone and walk around and film stuff. You know what I mean? It's like, that's basically how it started with, with me, with everything I've done with Cocktail in America, just showing up with a camera, making shit happen, you know? And then slowly like, okay, now we see this is good. Let's put a little more budget in it. Let's get like, you know, some nice microphones and whatnot and like some lighting equipment. I mean, I, our whole setup is probably like a grand, you know? Um, but anyway, Julia, I know you had a lot of thoughts. This is like kind of your topic. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, money is a a powerful motivator and 
you can charge more and you can hire professionals. But if you have the passion to do this, just do it. I mean, some of the people who are now stars were, you know, maybe not as big of stars before Powerlifting America and Powerlifting America, you know, helped them become bigger stars. So, um, you know, there's that aspect too. I mean, you promote the athletes, the the athletes become bigger, they promote you. um, And it's good things all around. You're drawing attention to your federation. People who don't, you know, follow powerlifting might see this stuff. The more content that's produced, the more you introduce these people. And, you know, they don't, it doesn't need to be Russ, like with the Lila Cooper example, you know, it, it doesn't need to be Russ because people from outside don't necessarily know that. You know, they don't know that who the big stars are and they're not just going to listen to the big stars because they don't really um, partake in a cult following of any specific power lifter. Um, and so that's what's important. I mean, you know, going back to, to Joe Whiteley here, um, she made open powerlifting. This was a nonprofit idea. You know, um, they, they survive off of donations. She just had um, the passion for it and she knew that something was missing. And so she helped create this. And that's how it has to start. Because if you're just going to wait for um, somebody to throw money at something um, without producing anything, without producing results, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's, you know, what, what Paul has done with the media team is he, he knew that there was a space for this and he went out and, and did it. Um, so that would be my message to any, any team, you know, any country that wants to promote their athletes, just go do it. It, it can be a cell phone, you know, just like you said, put the cell phone in someone's face, interview them, post it to your social media. It doesn't have to be top quality at first, as long as you're dedicated to improving it over time. For sure. Like, uh, our two biggest reels, Lila Cooper now 2 million, um, and then joy with the 4.67, whatever million reach, both of those shot with cell phones. Um, both of those are cell phone reels. Um, and yeah, so it's as simple as that. The other thing is at the beginning of that quote, I don't know if I might've started it a little bit late, but they talked about how Russ was ahead of his time. And when they would see him at the world championships back in like 2019, Caffrey was telling the story about how he had a camera crew around him and that no one really had that happening. And then now when you fast forward and you watch, like if you're in the warm up room in, in the world championships in Malta, for instance, Mike, we saw that not only is white lights there and SBD has a massive crew, like tons, like 10, 10 videographers and photographers everywhere. Like th- every major lifter basically is being followed around by multiple cameras. Um, and, and what Ryan made a really good point on that when, when uh, Cappy was telling that story was that, this is how you're going to get sponsors. This is how you're going to draw attention to the sport. Look at what has happened to Russ since then. People said that he was corny for having a movie crew back then, a film crew around him. Now look at him. You know, Now look where his brand is. Um, now look how he can monetize all his influence on social media and things like this. It's huge. So um, that's how we definitely have to do. I mean, there's no question in my mind. I, obviously, I'm super biased, but this is where the future of the sport, this is how we're going to get those big time sponsors that I keep talking about. You know, this is how we're going to get Amazon, how we're going to get like a bank to, to sponsor us, how we're going to get Mercedes, you know, these big companies, like we're talking about supplements. Don't forget pregame shows in Malta. We're all sponsored by Monster and Red Bull, whichever one, take your pick. Um, but yeah, like we're, we're going to get those companies eventually. And then Mike Gold, the other thing was, was he said, there's a quote, there's this famous quote and it's, you got to spend money to make money. I thought he was going to say something else. I thought he was going to say a different quote which you know what quote I'm talking about. It's a baseball quote from a famous movie. And you said it before. If you build it, they will come. Oh, okay. Remember? Yeah. If you yes. build it, they will come. Like that's that's like you said that before about the press conferences and, and, the, and the pregame shows that we're doing at the World Championships in Malta. Like even this, even this live podcast right now, what we like, how many people are watching it right now? Like six people live. Wait until the day when we turn this on and we're going to be like, sponsored by monster and there's a thousand people watching it live right yeah like junior worlds in romania sponsored by everclear i'm gonna get tito's vodka that's gonna be our first alcohol sponsor i'm telling you right now. Uh, we do a lot of uh, stuff in austin texas and we're a nonprofit. i know they love that but um yeah let's um also mention uh adriana oh, Oh, I just wanted to say one more thing because you said yeah. like people were calling Russ corny and all that, and you might not like 
his style. You might not like, you know, whoever you might not like Sean Noriega, you might not like who whoever, whoever is out there. Any, you know, um Taylor Atwood, you might not like how they promote themselves, but the fact is that they they do promote themselves and they have gotten to, to where they are by doing that. And um, don't be afraid to go do this stuff because some troll is going to call you corny or somebody isn't going to like what you do because you're never going to please everyone. Like, it's just not going to happen. So, you know, just do you, you may as well just do you and be happy. And, you know, you're going to have haters either way, but you're going to have a lot more fans if you stay true to yourself and you live up to your potential. Yeah. So I feel like, yeah, I mean, I'm going to go ahead, Mike. I want. So the funny thing is, so he made that point. I remember in the podcast and I'm going to kind of, kind of agree with Julia, kind of argue all these people, Ross, Taylor, whoever, whoever you like, don't like. Um, I think they should definitely promote themselves. And, and they they obviously do a good job of it. Taylor actually used to not really do much of that. Like he would post his lifts and that's it. But obviously he's gotten way more into it over the last like two, three years. But like, and then we have like other people who are like world champions and have like 10,000 or 5,000 followers that don't do yeah. it. So yeah. by all means, they should promote themselves. But where I'm going to argue is, I don't think they're corny. But when you go into a gym and you see, a bigger camera crew for some kid hitting some random PR than you do at like a world championship. That's kind of corny. Just saying. It is, but I still salute that kid for doing it. And um, I also think yeah, that just to me is a sign that we should have more cameras at the world championships. Like, I mean, I you should see how many cameras are like, I, I've been on the sideline of football games. It's an insane amount of cameras. Like the Olympics, one of my mentors is a photojournalist that has the, what they call the golden ticket at the Olympics where he can go anywhere and do anything that he wants. Um, working for a li- formerly life magazine and then time magazine and it's a insane the number of there's like there's like something like twenty thousand photographers and cameras at events like that like it, a ridiculous more than if we could just have them in the audience of our meets it would be like the biggest power of the meet ever uh powers, so i mean we just need to we need to normalize this stuff um i do think it's very interesting to to point out i think the two biggest influencers in power of the america are joy and lane norton neither of them are open lifters neither of them are going to open world championships um at this point they you know uh, joy finished second in scottsdale and her reel still got 4.6 million views lane norton just finished second his stuff's still blowing up um i think joy is a really good example of someone who just puts in the work puts in the work she doesn't do she doesn't have a massive film crew following her everywhere she gets photographers to help her out where she can or she films on her phone um it's a small footprint and, but it's all about putting that work out there and just constantly pushing it. And that's how you're going to get the sport. Joy is going to bring more people into the sport than damn near anyone else. Maybe other than Russ and then Lane, Lane Norton over an extended period of time, you know, but she's Candido. Gonna get, huh? Number one, Candido brought the most people into the yeah, sport. Yeah, Candido. Right? I mean, yeah, exactly. Some, some of these over time, like they're still bringing people into the sport, those old YouTube videos. Anyway, long story short, um, shout out to Kafui. Uh, thanks for saying our name and uh, uh, Ryan as well. Um, for bringing up, you know, the stuff that we're doing and it's, we're all doing it together. It's not just us. Like he said, um, the media, the, everyone is realizing you need to do more media to promote the sport. And that's how we're going to get the big sponsorships. And by him saying that stuff, by Russ saying that stuff, it helps us go back and argue for bigger budgets, bring out more people, do more press conference, do, do bigger media, um, put more effort into it and just keep growing. And next we just got to land that big ass Red Bull or monster sponsorship or whatever. And then uh, everyone will see that this stuff really pays off and we can keep doing it. But I want to go to the chat. Uh, Adriana Davis made a comment. She said she didn't even know who Eleni, Eleni was or Chelsea, the sub juniors, until we started bringing the spotlight to them and Luella. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate that. That's the point of what we're doing is we're all about, we're all for the lifter, you know, like we're doing this all as a passion. Um, and the lifters, f- the the spotlight, uh, that's, that's at the forefront of every single thing that we're doing here is trying to create platforms for the lifters this um even though we're talking about a lot of random stuff on this episode tonight um we're doing this so we can build this platform up so we can bring lifters in and spotlight them tell their stories help blow them up and then get them sponsors and then ultimately we raise the the standard for the sport we bring in more money into the sport and it helps everyone across the board you know we can make a living off this um you can um you know get sponsorships and you know pursue your dreams so Thank you for mentioning that, Adriana Davis. Is this the Adriana Davis? Michael? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is. 
Okay, sweet. All right, I love to see her in here talking, um, bringing up points and whatnot. That's great. Eventually, we'll have her in here as a special guest co-host, something like that. Special professor emeritus, uh, <laughs> Sorry, guest, emeritus. Guest, guest lecturer. Uh, that's an office reference. You guys don't get it. You're too young. But um, speaking of young people, let's get into this. Let's talk about sub junior and junior world championships in Romania. We'll wrap up the conversation with this. So this is what we'll talk about for the rest of the show. Um, I'm going to start off while we're going here. So first thing I want to ask just off the top, because we need we to get the hype train rolling here is from the American side, who are the athletes and the performances that you are looking forward to the most? And we'll let you each go and then I'll go and let's just do like a couple rounds of this until we exhaust a, a lot of the big names that we're looking forward to. And, and again, this is who you're looking forward to seeing their next big performance on the international stage with the strictest standards, with the brightest lights, right? It doesn't necessarily mean like they're going to win or are you expecting them to get gold and everything or anything like this? It's just like, who are you really looking forward to seeing the most? And in the chat, um, if you're listening, drop who you think, um, you know, who you're looking forward to seeing the most. All right. So I'm going to kick this one over to Mike Gold first. And then in the background, I'm going to play some clips just from quick little cell phone shots that I did today. Um, show you guys what the hotel looks like over here in Romania. Show you a little bit about the setup um, in the in the in where the platform is. It's not done yet, so don't judge them harshly. It won't be done until tomorrow. But I'm going to just go ahead and roll these clips in the background while you guys are talking. So go ahead. Okay. So the person I'm by far the most hyped to see is my boy, Anthony. Um, for a while, he wasn't really like posting or he was posting, but like, Maybe it was just not no top sets or whatever. And I was like, uh, I mean, I still think he's going to win, but I don't know how training's going. Uh, maybe things are not like going like perfectly. But then recently he started posting some big stuff again, including that insane 700 for five squat. That is absolutely nuts. Um, I don't know what his plans are in terms of attempts and stuff, but it looks like he'll be opening probably in the 700s, I, I would assume. Um, and I would assume he's going to absolutely shatter the world record squat. It's, I think I, I think I checked this up last time. It's in the article. I think it was like three thirty two and a half, and a half, which is like, um, seven thirty three in pounds. And I expect him to absolutely obliterate that. And wow. Now I'm just looking at the video and this looks pretty cool. I, I am kind of jealous. Blues is pretty sick, man. I, I went to a little uh, spot here right outside uh, the hotel uh, before this. And yeah, there's, there's, there's nightlife happening. There's all kinds of cool architecture and whatnot. It's cool. It's, it's super cool. But back to Anthony. So while we're on the topic, Julia, I know you're going to have your, uh, your athletes that you're looking forward to the most. And if you have it in the chat, drop it in the chat, who you're looking forward to the most, but Mike gold, how big was that squat? Cause when I see people doing reps of five I, I just i lose i lose any sort of idea of how how big it is okay. and then also what kind of number do you think he's gonna post and put it in the context of like the best in the world and, and where he would stack okay up? so for some perspective um i don't think he posted this but last year when we were training together in prep for last year's world he squatted um one day around this time frame also like two weeks out i think he squatted like 737 for a top single and it was probably a little bit high and very very shaky and at that point i think his best was he had hit like a 650 for five so now we're thinking we're talking 50 pounds more for a clean set of five i'm i don't think he's going to go as heavy as i'm about to say because i think he's going to play not conservative but like try to go nine for nine make sure everything's like sunk and whatever but i think we're, he, he might be good right now for like 770 or something like that wow like he is right now, he might be, he might be up. It's possible his top end is being the, the second best squatter in the 105s right now after Anatoly. Like Anatoly has the world record with like 790 something, 798. I don't remember exactly something like that. He might be right behind him in terms of the best squatters in the world. That's amazing. And what about his total? Cause what did he, didn't he total 900? Didn't he break into the 900? Was it 901 yeah. or 900 even at that meet in Buffalo? So, 
he did that at, at the Kenmore meet. Um, was it 900 was, on the dot? Was it, it was definitely broken 900. I don't know if it was a little more, but, okay. and then he, he dipped a little bit at uh, PA Nets. But so in terms of total, um, I don't think I've seen so much bench recently, but if I had to say off the top of my head right now, total, I think top end, I think he could go into the mid to upper 920s. It was 900 on the dot. Yeah, 900. You know, I, I think he could go into the 920s. And I was there that day. Um, shout out Vin. He runs Amazing Meats. I actually just recorded a podcast episode a couple of days ago with Shane Nutt. And he talks about that competition as like, he said it was the best power to me he ever been to. So shout out Vin um, Mangione. He's the head coach for the Ross, the raw classic side of the sub juniors and juniors here at the world championships. He was the head coach uh, for the North American championships as well. He coaches joy among many other superstar athletes. Eleni is another one. Uh, Trey Forrest who balled out in North American property championships. Great coach. Um, but yeah, that, that meet was fantastic. Anthony, hit that 900 on the dot and it looked like it was with ease he was chilling all day he was having fun and then i know some life things came up before scottsdale the junior world champ or the junior nationals and that kind of got in the way so that's where i'm kind of asking you mike based on those numbers that you've been seeing this week is he back to that form that he was back in buffalo and beyond or what i think he's way past it that's awesome Damn. So he's talking, you're saying 9, 10, 9, 20. I think 9, 10 would be a disappointing day. Dear Lord, putting a, a <clears throat> high pressure on our man. So, all right, Julia, what do you, what's your take? Uh, if you want to talk about Anthony or you want to give us your, who are you looking forward to the most? Yeah. So um, I'm just going to echo Adriana in the chat here. Um, you know, so she uh, said, uh, Carolyn, um, Joy versus Daisy and Luella versus Chelsea. I think, you know, my, my top one um, is going to be Luella versus Chelsea. Um, I just think that that's going to be phenomenal. Um, two sub juniors, um, they're one, two in the, in the 84 plus sub juniors. And, um, you know, they're both putting up numbers that are just, you know, we haven't seen at, at this age in, in this weight class for a very long time. Uh, I think Luella popped off a little bit at um, NAPF and she definitely blew her um, entry total to uh, Romania out of the water. Um, and I think that Chelsea is, you know, putting up, um, you know, very good lifts in training. And I think that they're both going to be miles ahead of what they, what they put up there. And I think that this is going to be uh, the beginning of, a rivalry that can, you know, potentially keep going into the open and we can see them shatter records at every level. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, that's a really good one. Um, shout out Adriana. I, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Adriana, Ad Adriana, I will say. Um, I'm going to stop sharing that right now. Um, but yeah, that's Cluj. Um, definitely, I'll echo what you just said. I mean, Chelsea, go listen to the podcast with her. How can you not love her? She's absolutely amazing. Luella, same thing. Like, do you see the smile on her face when she hit that squat in Cayman Islands? Like, how can you not root for her, man? She's so, so, such a sweetheart. Like, it's almost like giving me goosebumps right now just to think about it. I just, and neither of them have ever been in a battle with anyone. They've all, they've all kick walked through all their champions through, like in Chelsea's case, high school and junior, uh, high school and sub junior nationals. And then uh, Luella at open nationals and open North American championships. Um, they, they haven't, they really have anyone challenging them. And so now we're going to get to see that head to head battle. How do they deal with the pressure? What kind of moves do they make? How do their coaches stack up all this kind of stuff? So I, I think it's really cool. And they get to do it on the international platform in front of everyone with the Olympic channel watching and all this. It's like, that's a lot of pressure for these young girls. So um, I'm sure it's going to make diamonds out of them though. So that's a, um, that's obviously a really good one. Um, I, I really like the joy versus Daisy. Um, I'm, a, I'm a, obviously everybody criticizing me for being a massive joy fanboy, And I am, um, because I know her really well personally, and she's an amazing person, but I also really like Daisy, man. She just came in and, and she's a little bit older. 
she's got a little bit of an edge on that on that front um that she's you know joy is like the youngest in the sub junior or in the junior category she just aged in daisy's a little bit older um but i would love to see daisy ball out too and start doing some crazy stuff i love these 63 battles um 63s like that's my like favorite weight class you know it's like that's like meg scanlon um who who everybody knows i'm a massive fanboy of meg scanlon as well um and then of course like the greats the greats um you know leah bavois and Corolla Gara. It's like just like one of the most badass weight classes. So I'm looking forward to the future of that. Um, Carolyn too. Carolyn is right there. So those are all really good answers. So I'll leave the I'll leave my answer with that and kick it back over to Mike. Who are you looking forward to the most after those? So besides for Anthony, this one's probably in a way I'm looking forward to even more because it's not a solo battle. Um, I'm looking forward to watching uh, Boss Man Shane. Um, competing in a stack 93s. Uh, he has, he's competed once in like the last year, which was PA Nats. Got and it was, it, yeah. Oh, he, oh, he got pushed the rink and then pushed somebody else, whatever, different discussion. But anyway, he had a good performance, but he didn't go all out because he sacrificed his third attempt for playing the game, which is important. Um, in this situation, he's not going to be able to sacrifice their attempt because it's going to be with multiple people. So we're going to get to see him go all out. Um, Shane doesn't really post so much training like most other lifters do. So I don't necessarily have a great idea of where he's holding, but um, I know training is going well. And I expect him to put a nice PR on what he did last time. And I don't know. I, I can't tell you it's enough to win. I we have like five like really, really good competitors. We're all pretty close. I don't know where most of them are individually, but I know that Chain's going to put up something big and hopefully it'll be enough to win and it'll be exciting to watch. Um, in terms of any one class that I, if I had to pick one class to watch, that's the class. Okay, good. I hope you weren't going to move on because we have breaking news on this front. Did you get that DM I sent you? Yeah, so I, I wasn't sure what it meant because I've seen people post things like that before. And until I see his name off of the rock. Okay. So, um, Swedish 93, uh, Yulong Lee, uh, last year's surprise winner made some posts. Um, let me just pull it up. But basically the post makes it sound like he is no longer powerlifting. It said, I'm pretty much done with powerlifting for now. I have achieved many goals throughout, through my junior years. See ya. Now, I don't know exactly what to make of this. Um, I know he had been battling an injury earlier, and I remember him saying maybe like two months out that if he didn't get to certain numbers by a certain point, he would drop out. But then after that, training uh, seemed to go really well, and it looked like he was coming back. Um, um, okay, yeah, it looked like he was coming back and that he would be competing and be competing at a high level. But his last post before this dropout one, or not dropout, before this one that might be a dropout was a fail video. Um, I'm not sure what's going on. I'm not sure if he re-injured himself. Um, but it does look like he likely is dropping out, which would take out one of the major contenders. It would still be – it would. it's so stacked that even if you take out the person nominated first last year's champion – it would still potentially be the most stacked class in the entire that entire world championship. So, um, but yeah, it means that, I mean, that's a, that's a, I don't think anyone would have predicted that you long would not be on the podium. So wait, pause for a second. Let me just correct myself. I, yeah. I should have spent one extra minute looking, but I was just saying it soon came up. Uh, he is competing in Romania. Okay. Yeah, is that uh, what I said I, say in the I would just do my last competition in Romania, and in the future maybe I'll come back. Okay, yeah. So that's what Shane told me. He said that he's going to do worlds, but isn't expecting too much out of himself. His last post before this was failing some lifts. Um, but anyway, he was a podium favorite. Like I, I think everyone would have predicted him to make it on the podium, and now that opens up a podium spot. We've got two dogs in this fight, right? 
in Peyton and Shane. So this just increases our chances a little bit of getting a gold and possibly a silver. It would be so sick if we could sweep this with the, mo the, the tightest weight class uh, in the whole competition possibly and U.S. comes through one and two. That would be so badass. So I'm, and of course, like we love Shane. He's like an OG godfather of the juniors, which is crazy that that he's in the juniors. I did a podcast with him. It'll be dropping soon. Well, before it'll be dropping before he lifts and everything. So be uh, sure to look out for that and watch it. He drops a ton of knowledge, ton of wisdom. Like I said, he's a savvy veteran of the game, and so it's like you you definitely want to take notes on the kind of stuff that he's talking about. But yeah, anyway. That is a uh, a great matchup. We're all hoping for Shane uh, to to win that one in his last shot. Um, but also Peyton is also t uh, born in 2000 as well, so it's his last shot as well. And he's an absolute dog too. He doesn't get any. Nobody knows who he is. His qu Instagram is Quad Sauce. He almost never posts. Um, we're gonna spotlight him. We're gonna be all over him. We're gonna be doing interviews with him. We're gonna do press conferences. We get try to get him on some pregame shows. As soon as I see him here in the hotel, I'm gonna be making videos. Uh, that he's in the building and whatnot. We're going to try to blow him up for sure because he deserves it as well. And I can't wait to see these two young cats uh, go out into the open where it's already uh, like so one of the most loaded and stacked 93s ever um, in this next uh, um, Power of Teen America Classic Open Nationals, which will be in Reno later this in 2024. So, all right, Julia. Yeah, uh, so you type um, in something. Yeah, you got one. Oh, yeah. So um, my... My second uh, choice is going to be Eleni, uh, literally pull it herself into, I would say, um, the, the, the favorite position here, like the, um, you know, the favorite for, for the gold. She was nominated second, but um, she's, you know, since deadlifted 400 pounds and hit some, you know, incredible lifts. And I think that you know, Mike said this too in his, in his scouting report, which, you know, I mean, that, that thing was thorough. He's like the next Matt Gary over shout here. Out, but, shout out Mike Gold. Uh, but um, she, I she love could, how we just shout out ourselves. <laughs> she could very well um, open deadlifts above the world record, uh, which is insane. Um, I remember uh back a way, way, way long time ago when I was um, stupidly trying to be a 57. Um, how big of a deal a 400 pound deadlift was at the open level. Um, so to be doing it as a sub junior is, is just incredible. Um, and I, you know, she's obviously already a star. I think this is, you know, it's only up from here. I think that, um, <laughs> She's going to do um, very well here, set world records, um, win a gold medal, and I'm just here for it. I I think that it's it's good to see um, that we have some rising stars on the female sub junior and junior side. So um, yeah, that that'd be my second choice. Huge, Eleni is a star in the making. I was just gonna pull her up on Instagram here real quick and see where she's at, so that we can. Uh track this she's at 5,000 she just broke 5,000 she got 5,300 followers we got to get her to 10,000 followers like tomorrow we got to happen it has to happen this week this is her coming out party we know her we love her we saw her ball out at high school nationals we did a podcast interview with her again shout out our own podcast uh interview if you haven't listened to that she's so smart she breaks down some some of the battles at the worlds in Malta like she gives feedback for the IPF on how you know the juries work and the and how the uh um pacing of it go went and everything like she she weighed in on everything she's a student of the game she watches the sport she's just now been working with vin mangioni who we mentioned before um and so the sky is the limit for her she's really gonna take off i think coming up and we just want to really showcase her and spotlight her um anytime someone says eleni in the 57s what do i always say jessica haggerty in the 52s um because she is just like Eleni. She absolutely balled at high school nationals. Her and Eleni stole the show. Um, she's also a rising superstar. Nobody knows about her because her Instagram is even less. I don't even know what, what she has uh, on social media right now, but we're going to make sure that whatever it is, we're going to triple it this week um, and get her going. Let me pull it up real quick. Jessica Haggerty lifts 387. That's a national travesty right there. That's a like, crime. That's a crime. Like someone should be arrested. Um, but she she is 
going to be a star. So um, make sure to be looking out for her. And I mean, we'll see where the future is with her as well, because she's a sub junior. She's got a lot of time to grow. Um, you know, 52s on the U S on, on the world stage, we need 52s, you know, like we need a 52. So, I mean, I hope that maybe she can be our, our salvation in the future, but, um, all right. So that wasn't actually my pick though, Jessica Haggerty, but I just, every time we say Eleni, it's just right there on the nominations, right next to her in the 52. So we got to mention Jessica Haggerty, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just mention the women's equip team as something mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to watching because equip doesn't get enough love. We already talked about Lila Cooper earlier, but I want to spotlight one person in particular who I recorded a podcast episode with before I left. I'm going to be posting that one immediately, like later tonight. By the way, it's like one o'clock here in Romania right now. Your boy is super tired. I had a 20 hour flight to get here. Um, this is how hard we're working for you out here. And I'm not going to sleep this whole week, but it's one o'clock. I'm going to get that Bella Vargas interview posted. Um, Bella is nominated over a hundred kilos ahead <laughs> of second place. This is like ridiculous. She's that good. I mean, she is so good. I think she got invited on the podcast. I think she told me that she did get invited to be on the open team headed to Lithuania later this year, but she couldn't do it because she's a student athlete. She's got a great story. Definitely want to listen to that podcast whenever it drops, but she's going to put up a massive solo performance. And then I also want to just like, uh, I'm, I'm saying women's equipped team overall, but really the sub junior uh, women's equipped team. I think they have a really good shot at taking home gold and team points anchored by two absolute studs. Um, one may be the second coming of like Kelsey McCarthy, three-time world champion. And that is Catherine Cargill um, in the 69s. She is also nominated something like 20, 30, 32 kilos ahead. And she's born in 2005. So, you know, she still has time uh, to keep growing. And so, and she's from powerlifting royalty. We talked about before everyone in her family power lifts, they own a gym. Like she, she has everything at her fingertips to become, like the next great superstar on the equip side. And then the other one that I want to mention is just uh, is Mackenzie Wells also nominated 25 kilos in first place uh, in the 84 kilo division. She came to high school nationals. She also, I mean, she's in Amanda Lawrence's weight class. So we're going to call her the equip sub junior, Amanda Lawrence, the queen, and um, definitely tune in to see her. These are two names that if you don't know them already, Catherine Cargill and Mackenzie Wells, you're going to know them because we're going to talk about them. And they're going to be lifting in the next few days here in Romania. And then Bella Vargas is the other one um, in the junior. So we got two sub juniors and a junior on the equip side. So look at that. I'm doing my duty to, to help the equip side grow. And these ladies are going to ball out and prove me right and help the equip side grow uh, with their massive performances on the world stage. All right, Mike Gold, what's the next one for you? The next one for me is going to be not one person, but both the 83s. Okay. Um, so obviously, uh, Alex, I've known for probably longer than most people in powerlifting. I remember when he came to my gym when he was like 16 and like squatting like 400 pounds. Um, and so I've known him for a while. And then Connor, um, I don't really know. I mean, I just heard of him for the first time when I was like looking up things for junior nationals, but obviously he won junior nationals, uh, had a great performance. Training's going well for him. Training's going amazing for Alex. Um, I'm just curious to see where they're, where they're going to end up. I think Connor's like nominated in like sixth, I believe, and Alex in like 11th. But like we mentioned uh, the other time, there's just a, there's a small gap between everyone. Like it's, the deepest this class has ever been and like at any spot like any five spots can be separated by five kilos or stuff like that so um they could easily end up in the top five they could easily end up 10th like realistically so um i'm curious to see where they end up and i hope that they can both work their way into the top five maybe podium so i'm definitely excited to see that class yeah i can tell you right now connor's a dog we saw him in uh Scottsdale, we did a post uh, competition press conference with him. Smart, strong as hell. Um, had more in the tank. I mean, I think he, I don't think he was really pushed. He totaled 743, and then Alex totaled 722. So he basically cakewalked to that total. 
I know he's his training is looking really good right now. So I'm ha- I'm excited too for people to see who this kid Connor is. Of course, Alex is our boy, right? We had him on the last episode, Monday Night Live. Go back and listen to it last week. That's what Mike was referencing. We talked about how this weight class is super stacked. But we had Alex on last week, so go back and check that out. He's one of our guys. Like we're gonna bring him on here more as a co-host and stuff. Like he's super smart. He's a coach. He's a young guy. He's coaching Carolyn Connor, who's gonna ball out at this competition as well. And she's making amazing progress, like on track to be arguably the most decorated lifter of all time. She only lifts at nationals and internationals. So um, good pick there for sure. All right, Julia, who's your next? All right, I'm gonna pick um, a battle that I'm surprised hasn't been mentioned yet, but uh, it's the 74 kg sub juniors. Um, This seems to be a fixture now. uh, with Nick Gaines and Jack Reynolds, um, I, you know, Nick has been popping off in training and he is coming in, um, a half kilo behind Jack. Jack is always a gamer. He's always, you know, he's going to put up something big. He's, he likes to perform. Um, but Nick's lift, Nick's lifts have just been, you know, above and beyond. I, I can't really see anyone catching him, um, but you know he does have to make the right calls on attempts. So um, that is a thing. So as, as we found out, so um, that would that would be my um, next pick. Um, and I know I think um, Mike probably has a lot more information as um, as to Nick's uh, lifts, but uh, yeah, I, I mean I think that he's going to be number one. I think. Jack's going to do his best to challenge him, but, um, but I, I predict them going one, two, Nick Gaines and then Jack Reynolds. Yeah, it was uh, talk about Jessica Haggerty's lack of social media presence being a national crime. Um, <laughs> Nick game, Nick Gaines <laughs> attempt deadlift selection oh uh, <laughs> should have been a national crime as well. I mean, when you <laughs> pull it and you lose by half a kilo, the dude has got to have a bad taste in his mouth. I'm sure he's fired up. He's been posting stuff. We've been reposting it. Training's looking amazing. Um, Jack Reynolds still has two more years as a sub junior. Jack Reynolds is a young king. Like, there's no question about it. I think it it might be Nick Gaines' time, but um, we might be entering into a Jack Reynolds era in the future. So I think definitely that's one that you want to take a look at and watch if you haven't watched already. Um, so, yeah. All right, next up. Is it my pick? All right, I'm gonna go ahead. You know, I want to give some love for our quip, our quip squad here, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go with one of the nicest dudes you'll ever meet, and that is the 66 kilo phenom Kyle Nowak. Um, I heard them talking about him on King of the Lifts, and I wanted to ask Mike Gold about this because I know he knows everything. Um, did he? He has competed internationally. He competed at the University World Game. He did University University Worlds in Turkey. University Worlds in Turkey last year, right? Exactly. They said that he doesn't have international uh, experience, but he does. Um, And the question mark with him is: so they brought this up on King of Lifts. I gotta, I gotta give credit where credit is due. Um, What's he nominated with here? Six sixty. Six six sixty two. Yeah. And. The world record is 688. And guess whose world record that is? Charles Poco. Exactly. Who we just got to meet down in the Cayman Islands. Nice he was guy. there? Yeah, he was there hanging out, uh, cheering on his boy, Mario Leos. I talked with him, chatting Charles, him up. Charles he's is one of, the most, he's one of the most hilarious dudes in powerlifting. He's so sweet. He's such a nice guy. He's amazing. Yeah. Um, right when I saw him, I was like, I was looking at him like he walked in when we were still like putting everything together and like the warm up room was like a t- or the the main pl- main room where the competition happened was like a total disaster zone. He walked in and I just looked at him like I know who you are. And of course, you know like I'm like starstruck, went up and shook his hand. Little fun fact, the one and only singlet that I own, I bought it because Charles Opoko broke the squat world, squat world record in it um in like 2019 was it 2019 or 2018 worlds. It was one of the Sweden ones. He went back to back, I forget which year. Uh, but it's a very um, strange singlet that no one would ever buy, um, except for me because I was, was a big fan of Charles Opoko at that time. 
And um, then he immediately switched to SBT like one week later. <laughs> so anyway, uh, but getting back to Kyle Novak, he's just, he's one of the nicest guys. Um, he had a battle. Um, he had an absolute battle in Scottsdale. Um, we thought it was going to be a really, a really big battle uh, with our boy, Zach Taylor, who is also a stud. And Kyle came out on top, the taper, his coach tapered him perfectly and it, he cruised on the day. And so if they can replicate that again, I saw he posted something today that he's working with Kedrick, which I didn't know that. I didn't know that Kedrick was doing his nutrition and whatnot. So, I mean, he's, he's not leaving anything to chance. He's got one of the best nutritionists in the game. We obviously know his tape for works with whatever he's doing with training. Cause we saw it in Scottsdale. The question will be, can he get to that 688 junior world record or can he get close to it? And then also Mike, he's going to pull something crazy. He's probably, he's going to pull the world record for sure. Right. On yeah. deadlift. I don't even yes. know what it is, but I know he's going to break it. What, the junior or the open world record? Oh, is he going to break the open? Yeah, it, that's Brian's 300.5. Okay, 300.5. He's already done 302.5. Okay. He's going to break the open potentially on a second if he wants to. Holy shit. So there you go. I picked a good one. Kyle Nowak, stay tuned for that one. Sparks are going to fly. Uh, could be a potential junior world record total. Definitely going to be sounding like an open world record deadlift. So in the juniors. So that's great. And couldn't be a nicer person. Super soft-spoken, super smart. Uh, can't wait to show you guys his personality a little bit more. If you go back and you watch the uh, highlights, story highlights that are on our profile from Scottsdale, you'll see some nice interviews with him on there. Um, and I th believe he also did a press conference with us as well. So go check that out. All right. Um, all right, you guys want to move on? You want to, or you guys want to keep hitting? Yeah, we can move on. Okay, so the question I have in this weight class in particular, the 66 is, what do you think of this Canadian guy? Do you know who he is? Are you talking about the kid that, that King of the Lifts put, reposted in the story, that one? Yes. What do you think of this guy? Tran, no, it must be Tuan Hein Tran. What do you think? Um, He's nominated at 595. I mean, he said he can fight, he, he can fight for a second if he wants. He said he's going to do something special. What do you think of just his overall attitude? I, I'll start. I love I, it. I, I like it. I mean, so this comes down to actually something Russ said. Other people have said it also, which is like Russ is, wasn't, didn't apply directly here, but he's like, don't like, don't start talking about coming at me if you're like ranked 10th. Like, make sure you're top five, make sure whatever. <laughs> so, I think, I think you should definitely, I mean, you're coming into competition. You should always, if it's possible, think that you can win or think that you can, whatever, whatever your best outcome is, you should, th you should think that's what's going to happen. Um, I don't know enough about this kid at all. Literally, I didn't know who he was until Same. King Lips reposted him in the story. But if he thinks he can, he has a shot of winning, then, all for it. But when you do talk like that, there's going to be blowback. So it's a, it's a trade-off. Um, I like the attitude. I, I like um, believing in himself. I think he has 0% chance of winning. Um, it's possibly come second. Everyone after that is like a little bit further behind. Like um, I know uh, Taiga uh, from Japan is looking strong. He's I would say pretty comfortably going to come in second also. So realistically, I think this kid's fighting for third, but, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, it's, it's nice to have because sometimes we just have people who have no personality and are kind of boring. So I definitely, uh, it's definitely cool to see when people uh, say stuff like that. Just, I hope he could back it up. Not, not winning. He's not going to win. I'm saying, I hope he, yeah, hope he could I, back it up with like a, with a good performance, like, like a podium, like finished in third. Or yeah. Something. Yeah. Like just, it's not like he doesn't have to win to back it up. I hope he puts up something like way, way over his nominations, like some impressive lifts and comes in a good placing like that. If he does that, then like that's enough backing up for me. Like if he totals something like uh, you said, he's nominated like 595. You said yeah, eighth place. Yeah. So if, he, so if he goes like 635 and comes third, then I think that would be backing it up um, enough. But don't don't total 602 and come in seventh place. Don't do it. Yeah, yeah, that would be that would be rough. Julia, what do you think? You're muted or something. Yeah, you're muted. Yeah, um, I I think banter, you know, is always 
usually good. I mean, I, I won't say always good. Um, it did a lot for the the 74s uh, back in the day um, on King of the Lifts when they had that podcast. Um, drew a lot of attention. So, you know, I don't I don't mind it. Um, but I mean, I that's a lot of ground to make up, you know. Um, Kyle is nominated at 662.5 kilos and you know, you can you can be you can have the you can do the most special thing you you want, but if you're nominated at 595 and that total is fairly recent, you know, it's going to be quite hard to um to put that many kilos on your total. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, but you know, kudos to him for, uh, you know, making this a sport and, 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 you know, doing, you know, bantering with, um, the other athletes. I think that's good. Um, I think that's healthy. I think that's a sign that, you know, people are passionate about, um, this and they're taking it seriously and, you know, only good things. Definitely. All right. So, okay, Mike, we can't get off the juniors. We can't get off junior and sub junior uh, world champions first. I got I got a couple more things I got to hit. So first of all, I got to have to have you talk about a couple of superstars that you're looking forward to that are not Americans. Um, so that'll be next. Um, but first I do want to mention the men's equip team. Okay. Because we haven't talked about them basically at all on Monday night live. And so I want to just run through them really fast. Um, Jonathan Becherel in the 53 kilo weight class because we have 53s in sub juniors and juniors or at least is it just a sub juniors no it's sub no, juniors junior and juniors. Awesome. sub juniors and juniors he's nominated 35 kilos ahead in first place there so that's a name that you're going to know after this um another one that i want to mention in the sub juniors is from wisconsin arayo sanyalo he's comfortably in second place um maybe if he's put a lot on his total he hasn't competed i don't believe this total is from way back from high school national so maybe he's added a lot sub juniors can do that he's you know 70 kilos off first place but still in second place the other one kale mcdaniel um he's nominated in first by a, a mile 40 50 kilos um in the 120s and then the 120 plus i met this kid today i was on a flight with him had to change planes a couple times in frankfurt we we had to get a new plane and all this and that's Kellen Myers, uh, sub junior 120 plus, nominated 720, 10 kilos behind Chinese Taipei 730. Um, so that's going to be a fun, healthy battle right there. Um, that I think will be a fun one to watch. Um, he also hasn't competed since. Well, he had to do some like high school because he's from Louisiana. They do high school powerlifting, but he hasn't on a official plot, you know, like an IPF powerlifting America platform, hasn't competed since high school nationals either. So that total is super low compared to what he's going to be able to put up. 720 is going to be way beyond that. Um, and then on the juniors, so those were all sub-juniors. Um, on the junior end of things, on the men's, I wanted to mention, who was it? Um, because nominated at the front, we don't, our junior men on the equip side, no one's like nominated in first place, but Luke Mellon is in a battle with Philippe Parage. And you may know, you may recognize that name. Yes. Related I, was to on a, I was on a plane with Gaston today and, and he was talking shit. He was saying his kid's coming. He was saying his son's coming. So Luke, if you're listening to this, you got to take down the Honcho's son. I don't I know have one question. I don't I know what's going to be. I don't know what your future is going to be after that. You're going to wake up with a dead. My only question or is something, but... how big is the kid's arch? That's my only question. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. But Billy Parage. Um, Gaston was like super pumped about it. Um, he's, he's been, he's been competing in like a, a recently a bench. Um, I think he won, a uh, one of the Western European bench uh, competitions, something like this, but Luke, they're going to be in a battle for second and third. Um, the person who's in first from Germany, Moritz, he's going to run away with it there. But I thought there was another, Oh, the monster chase Lawton one Oh five. Um, also hasn't competed since high school national is nominated eight fifteen. He is by far the youngest junior in the weight class. He's uh, born 2004. He's going up against people who are four years older than him, born in 2000. He just aged up from the sub-junior. I think he won all four gold medals or something like that. He definitely won the world championships last year in sub-juniors. He's moved up, and he's already looking like if he can put this performance together, he can podium and possibly threaten for a bronze. And 
who knows with equipped you never know what's going to happen that's what's so exciting about it so maybe the person in first place from norway will bomb out and our boy chase Lawton will be back-to-back world champ in two two different age categories all right so that's the rundown on the equipped men that's a basic gist of it those are the studs there's all kinds of we got a great team. They're just super young on the junior side. A bunch of them just aged up. So they're going to be battling this year. But next year and the year after that, we're going to be sweeping the equip side for sure. All right. I wanted you to talk about some other couple standouts. There's a guy named Hamza something, something or other. I don't know who he is because I only follow American powerlifters. But supposedly he's pretty good. And then there's a guy named Timor as well. I heard he's pretty good. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about them so people can tune in to some of these other weight classes as well. Okay. Yeah. So I'll start with uh, a couple that you mentioned. I'll start with a couple of the ones who already have a little, are a little more popular. So the two you mentioned and one more. So Hamza Pham, um, he's a 105 from uh, Austria, I believe. He's put up absolutely insane numbers in the gym. He's a sub junior. He was there last year. Um He's total, he put up like an 880 SPD day recently, which is like 80 kilos higher than any sub junior has ever hit in any weight class, um, which is pretty cool. He's yeah. going to obviously shatter the world record for the sub juniors. I think he might be the closest to Anthony of any of the 105s. He's definitely someone to watch. He'll be exciting. Um, Tamor, he's the junior 120 plus from Georgia. He recently Kate got silver at in Malta. Uh, he's presumably, I haven't looked through the nomination so much, but presumably going to walk away with um, the gold pretty easily, seeing that if he's the second best open lifter, then he's probably going to be the best junior lifter. Yeah. Um, got a thousand kilo total nomination. Yeah. He's already over that. Yeah. So he's definitely gonna be someone to watch. He, uh, has gone previously for the deadlift world record before it got before it got pushed up by Jesus. He might be, I mean, he's nowhere near Jesus now, but he's very young. So who knows? Maybe he'll be the person to start coming close to Jesus. So he's someone to keep an eye on. It seems like and he then, has one more year as a junior, by the way. I don't know when his yeah. birthday is exactly, but he's born in 2001. So that would say, imply that he's still going to be a junior for a whole other year. So if there's anyone out there that can catch up to Jesus one day besides Pablo. Go ahead. Yeah. It could be this guy. So then another one of the ones who's a little bit more known now, he's been getting posted on stuff is um, Nanso Chinya. I don't know how to pronounce his name uh, from Great Britain, sub junior. He was a one Oh five last year. Last year he came in second. Um, um, he right ahead of our American. Um, I'm forgetting his name. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. uh, whatever. Anyway, so he moved up to 120. I'm not sure if he moved up to 120 just because he wants to go up a weight class or because he wants to get the gold because the 105 looks pretty locked. But he's a huge deadlifter. He pulled like seven, maybe 20 or something last year at Sub Junior Worlds to break the world record. And now he's like into like the 770 range. Um, his squat and bench are also making progress. I remember I met him in Turkey last year, like maybe the first, either the first or second night, I was like, chilling with um i think it was jeffrey and jeffrey and maybe anthony and we were like by the pool and we saw this kid and at, we both it was like late it was like probably like 1 a.m 2 a.m so afterwards we're going up and we started talking to him and he told us he was 16 and i was like shocked i thought it was like 23 or junior no the kid had like another year left in the sub juniors wow. i was just yeah and then since then he's like blown up a bit and He's going to be someone to watch for sure. Um, definitely going to be exciting. And then some other people, one other person who is not going to place as high, but pretty famous um, from Great Britain, uh, junior, uh, Nathaniel Messiah. Uh, he's been like a gym shark athlete for like a couple of years. He's like massive on social media. So I know he's always power lifted a little bit, but I believe this is his first worlds and he's going to, He's not, he's, I don't think he's going to be battling like for that top five since like we already established how competitive the top five and the 93s are, but he's, he's very strong and he's going to be putting up like a good performance. Now, the last two I want to mention for now are two who probably, 
there's a 99% chance you have no idea who they are. And they're in a weight class with, that doesn't have an American really battling for the gold. But that's the 120s. Now, we got Saeed al Hassi from Libya, who's got another year in the juniors also. Yeah. And then we got um, Etienne Chire from Lebanon. Now, these two nominated second and sixth, and sixth in the 120s have both put up well over 900 kilo gym totals. They're both way over their nominated totals. And like, I've been watching their lifts. Like, it's to standard. Like, they're hitting lifts that are clean lifts. So I'm really excited to see them. And just in general, the 120s are going to be a pretty entertaining class um, at Junior Worlds. But specifically them too, I really want to see like how big of a total they can do in like IPF world um, situations. But they're definitely two lifters to watch. And I think in general, the 120s, Probably in general are not spoken about enough. Yeah. Um, partially because for a while, like they were just dominated by Dennis in like the in the open class and it wasn't super competitive. And for whatever other reasons, but I think the 120s are like getting more competitive in the open. I mean, there is nobody who's like matching Dennis yet, but it's getting closer compacted. And now we have these two juniors who are like both like both have the potential to put up stuff that would place them in podium running in the open. So I think these are two kids to watch from two countries that are not really known for powerlifting stars. So I think, I think it'll be exciting. Yeah, those are good. That's a, those are what you're really digging deep on those um, to find those totals. And I know that you, those must be the lifters that you were talking about last time that you were talking with and stuff like that. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, Something. that's cool. It's always cool to like know ahead of time who these like breakout stars that everyone's going to be talking about in two weeks are because they're to- going to put up totals way bigger than their nominated totals. And that's why we got my goal to do dig through the dirt and find those diamonds in the rough. So, uh, thanks for pointing those out. I think we've done a pretty well-rounded sort of preview show, even though this isn't a preview show for the juniors world championships, but between this one and the previous, all the previous Monday night lives where we've been talking about it here and there a little bit. Um, if you listen to all of them, like all 12 hours of Monday night live, <laughs> you'll have a pretty you good idea. To, if you listen to the redacted hours, then. Oh, damn. Then you'd be a genius. Uh, yeah. There's some secret information in there that would really unlock the keys to the universe, but no one will ever know. But um Julia, do you have anything else that you want to add before we wrap this one? Was there anything else that you wanted to hit on before we close it down? You're muted. Um, yeah, actually there is. So um, going back to the equip side, I think um, you did not mention this and I, you know, um, I, I, I can see, I can see, um, you know, there's a lot of great lifters and, and why, this might be overlooked, but the U.S. on the women's sub junior um, equip side has two lifters um, within 20 kilos of each, of each other at um, 510 and 490. And the 84 they, plus, right? 84 plus, yes. Um, and they are um, the the leader who is a uh, Chinese Taipei is um, at 520. So that should be a pretty good battle um, between those three. And it actually mirrors the battle in the sub junior raw, because that's also a battle um, of two um, great sub junior 84 plus lifters uh, against Chinese Taipei. So um, it's interesting, you know, Chinese Taipei is really bringing um, a strong team this year in, in some divisions. And, um, yeah. yeah, I think that that's one battle that, that we, uh, we overlooked a bit. I, it's really cool to see the, um, 84 plus, uh, weight class popping off as always. I'm always going to highlight that. So, um, yeah, that would be, that'd be something that we maybe overlooked a little. Yeah. I mean, uh, just to say that, um, we have four sub junior 84 pluses, um, on our team four of them and they're all like in contention obviously on the classic side they're going to be one and two but over here on the equip side they could be two and three or you just never know what happens i mean they're they're within 10 kilos dage love and michaela Forsyth. they're within striking distance of gold medals 
um, and the 84 plus on the equip side, sub junior women. So it's huge. Um, also, I don't know if I mentioned Natalie Estrada, but you know, she's got like a, a 20 kilo lead as well. Um, uh, in first place in the 43 sub junior. So our sub junior equipped, uh, women team is really stacked. Like I'm going to be shocked if they don't win team gold. Um, but it's interesting. Yeah. Good point. Chinese Taipei. They're all over these nominations. They're everywhere. They got, they got a good squad. They got a good squad on equip. They got a good squad over on classic. So I'm excited for that. I'm happy to see it. I also know like, um, there's some Indian lifters here nominated in first place. Uh, they're going to be all over the podium. I see some nominated in second, um, a couple of them nominated in first over here on the women's equip side. So it's really cool to see these countries that we don't, you know, like we don't run into them a lot. We don't see them at North Americans. We don't really see India or we saw Chinese Taipei in Malta, but you know, they didn't have like a really huge team. Um, but they did have two tables reserved at the banquet. I remember that. So they must've had a pretty big team, but it's really cool to see Chinese Taipei in there. And it's really cool to see that stuff. So, uh, Nick Gaines, Oh, oh, he's in the chat. He's talking shit. <laughs> What's he saying? He says he's gonna eat Jack oh, be no <laughs> Reynolds for breakfast. Um, <laughs> he said there will be no misloading the third attempt this time around. Yeah, it might be Nick Gaines' week um, coming up. My not so hot hot take is that it won't matter. Your third deadlift attempt won't matter. It'll be yeah. over before your third deadlift. Yeah, Nick. I, I think I think Nick is on a little bit of a redemption arc, and um, Jack Reynolds though. Nick, Love who's that. your you're Love you're in the team. chat, so just answer. Who's your coach? I'm really curious. Yeah, Nick, who's your coach? I know Alex Sador stopped through down there. I know you're hanging out with Scott Strafford and stuff. Is he a is he a strength guy? I should know this because I, I repost him. How'd you repost him? He doesn't post. Oh, he posted something recently. He did? Yeah, Nick Gaines posts. You're thinking Peyton Johnson. Nick no, Gaines Nick, no. Peyton, Nick doesn't really post either. Yeah, he posted something. Uh, I think he sent a collab with us this week. Yeah, he did. How did you miss it four days ago? It was a 530-pound squat. I think it was a single. No, I, I don't mean – okay, I meant like if you look, like he's oh, like – like, yeah. It's Dungy Gains. I forgot. Yeah, I don't think I've ever um, tagged him in a, in a story. I'll have to start doing that. Oh, okay. Yeah, anyway. Oh, by the way, just to mention one more – um, you, lifter, you were saying like countries we don't get to see. So I don't know how real these numbers are. I actually didn't even like find them. Like I didn't look at the Instagram, but for 52 kilo uh, juniors, Joya Ka Kairala from Lebanon is nominated with 437 and a half. That's insane. Like that's like five kilos under where Noemi was like a year ago. Like that would be, that, that would have came like silver at before this year's worlds at like at, at worlds in the, in, for the open. Wow. And I mean, that's like 27 and a half ahead of uh, Camille Hadris, who's the, the French, like really strong 52 Beyond. junior. Yeah. Yeah. So, and she's a one, so she's a junior for another year. So, I mean, I'm just, I'm really Lebanon's curious bringing to see shooters. What, yeah. I, I'm really curious to see what like Lebanon, um, uh, what was the, what was the other country before um, Lebanon, Libya, like all these, yeah. All these like like um Arabic countries that haven't had huge teams in the past. Like I'm really curious to see what that because there's obviously really strong people out there. So um yeah. I definitely want to see more of it. For sure. Um Nick Gaines in the chat said he's with Dungy Gaines, Keenan Dung or Dunge and or Dung maybe it's Dungy Gaines, I don't know, but I know that guy. He was in Omaha. He trains at Omaha Barbell sometimes. I'm oh, he said he said I'm under a new coach since Nats. And since I don't care, I don't mind saying things that other people wouldn't say. Like I said, like I said on the redacted uh, on the redacted podcast that that if I were you, I would have fired my coach after nationals. Oh snap! Mike Gold with the super hot strong take. Listen, listen, there are some things that are fireable offenses for coaches, and that's one of them. So, yeah. And obviously Nick Gaines is a smart guy. He took your advice with, without even I, don't, I mean, I don't even know who his previous coach was, but regardless, your previous coach could have been like, could have been, what's it called again? It could have been um, the strength guys. It could have been anybody. You could have, it could have been, you know, it could have been Matt Gary. It's a fireable offense. 
no, that's a fireball offense. What you just said. That is true, but you're you're gonna be fired. Matt, talk, Matt Gary would agree with me. Matt, wait, about, Matt Gary. Yeah. I'm gonna clip this. Matt Gary would agree with me. He would fire making himself. A, Matt Gary would mistake. fire himself. <laughs> yes, yes. Making a mistake on judgment is one thing. If you load the wrong number to win and lose by half a kilo when it's there, and you load the wrong number, Matt Gary himself said that he's made many yeah. mistakes. But that one is a fireable offense. Math error is situation. not acceptable. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'll send it to him. I'm clipping this inside. Matt Gary did say that. He did say that. Yeah. I'll, By the I'll, way, I'll, I'll put this clip. I love, I'll clip I love this, Matt Gary. I'll put this on my story and say, if this was Matt Gary, is it a fireable offense? Make sure to my answer to, doesn't to matter. Part, when what? I say that I love Matt Gary, he's the OG legend. I also love and Matt Susie Gary. Too. Matt Gary and is Susie the, too. Matt Gary is the goat, but yeah. even the goat could be fired if they did something as stupid as that. Yeah. Let's see what he says. But um, shout out Susie too. God damn. You know what? We didn't even mention Susie Gary when we did uh, talked about NAPF as oh, well. Yeah. By the way, uh, I think she. Yeah, just that's your fault. You you guys are squat the world record. There. I think um, no no. I think no gold medals and everything, that. and then coached everyone under the sun. She's mm-hmm. amazing. Let's end off this episode with just shout outs to Matt and Susie Gary. It's Matt. We already talked about him. We say his name on here all the time, but we got to say Susie Gary's name more because she just coached. So many great, everyone wanted to hire her um, yeah, at the North American Poverty Championships. Um, I got to spend some time with her. She's so nice, so smart. I, every time I learn so much from her, just being around her in the warm up room, little things. Um, I'm always asking her little questions because I want to help our lifters. I'm there. I want to be able to do little things that can help. So that's why I like read Matt Gary's book and um, why I ask Susie Gary all these little questions throughout because I want to be able to keep an eye out for things and help our team and help our lifters. And uh, no one better to learn from. It's always an honor to be in their presence. So shout out Susie Gary. Uh, I'm 99% sure she broke a squat world record. Julia, do you recall at the North American Pop Team Championships? Yeah, yeah I think yeah. she broke her own. And yeah. at a weight class up, um, by the way, <laughs> um, she went up a weight class, which she didn't fully fill it out and broke world records. And like I said, just coached immaculately all week. Coached um, one of the most epic battles most hyped battles of the whole thing michael garazzo over lane norton it was a it was not just the battle of the athletes on the platform but it was also ben s grow and leah bavois in the background behind lane and Susie gary behind uh michael garazzo it was it was awesome so like she was there all week she worked her tail off she refed she was she was refing as well like like while she was she she had to have blocks under her feet uh, while she's repping so that her, so she could get some, cause she's on her feet all day. And it was just like, you don't want your legs dangling. Uh, she's just amazing. She's a, she coached, uh, Laura Estrella who said it was a highlight of her, you know, lifting career this far is to be coached by Susie Gary, a game day coach by Susie Gary. So super awesome. Um, okay. We said her name clip all that, Mike clip, make like four or five reels in a row, all one minute or uh, Instagram stories in a row, all one minute long. <laughs> see how hard Wait it is. Work. You Wait see how hard work. it is. Um, okay. Uh, last I agree. Thing, it's too much work. I know. So last thing, Julia, you, you mentioned something in the chat here. What were we going to say? Yeah. So um, I didn't realize this when we were doing the, the previews and what battles we're looking out for. So um, in the 63 junior um, division, um, Joy, was nominated in ninth um, at 433.5 kilos. Uh, and her most recent total, um, weekly total, uh, was 464 kilos. And that is extremely significant because the third place nominated total in that weight class is 464. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying, you know, your best gym lifts are going to, you know, happen on the platform on the world stage, um, but she is barely aged into this weight class. Um, And, you know, this is a weight class that the Europeans have historically dominated. So um, it's just, it's interesting to see. We'll see how much of that comes to fruition, but um, just that's massive. Um, And, you know, this, this can be the start of us taking back some of those weight classes um you love to see it so and just like looking to the future she keeps making gains she's got a great coach um she's hitting prs all the time like she definitely squats the depth in training um she definitely you know she just does some touch and go benches here and there but she pauses them when she counts them 
Um, she'll count it as a pause PR, stuff like that. And just the future is so bright for her. And um, just one of the biggest stars in the sport. We love her. She's amazing. She's going to kick ass. We also love Daisy too. We don't know what, what's going on with her. We don't see her training. Uh, yeah, post I would, I would repost Daisy uh, just as much as anyone else if she posted more, but she's keeping Not some things up. Her... Oh, oh, I would. Oh, I, yes, I would. Yes, I would. Cause I, cause hey. I want to be fair. I want to, I want to share the spotlight with them. Joy doesn't even need our, our help on shares. Um, she's helping us when she, when she, when we share her, it's helping us, but yeah, yeah. but go ahead, uh, Julia. What yeah. Um, no, so I, I talked to Daisy a little bit, um, after nationals and you know, she's one of the nicest, um, people oh, yeah. um, you just, you know, after you talk to her, it makes, it makes you want to root for her. Um, and yeah, you know, I know this is strategic to not post your lifts, but, but post your lifts. We want to, we want to show you some love here and, uh, we want to repost you. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. We want to help, um, grow your social media and, 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 uh, shine the spotlight on you for sure. And I'll tell you what, I mic'd up both of them and in Scottsdale, they're both so quiet, so soft-spoken. They have like the softest little voices that the microphone like barely picked up any of their voice. And all it was picking up was the announcer the whole time. So like the audio was like totally worth it. So that's when I learned, um, can't really mic up these young CC3s because they don't talk enough. They don't, they don't aren't fiery enough, but, um, but man, joy definitely gets fired. They both get fired up, but they just don't, they just don't say a whole lot. Um, very loud enough for the mic to pick up. But anyway, I, they're, they're both awesome. I can't wait to see, I would love to see them both sneak on the podium and, uh, shock the world, do something crazy like that. Um, and then just for the future, we, everybody knows, I think 63, 69, those are like the two of the toughest weight classes in the world. I mean, now damn, every weight class is tough. 76, 84, 84 plus they're all, they're all stacked. Um, you got to deal with, um, our, best lifter in the world, Natalie Richards in the 57s. I mean, there's just no easy weight classes anymore, but we got to get someone that can challenge with like Leah Corolla. You know, we got to have someone that can pick up the torch whenever Meg is done. Um, and so whoa, hopefully it'll whoa, be whoa, these two. Let's, let's chill on two. that. Let's chill well, She's going to be done one day. I mean, she can be done one day, but listen, if anyone. Her, kid, her, her daughter will pick up the slack when she's done. <laughs> her daughter's. And uh, hey, no one, one is a no one is a Only bigger one of Meg. Gonna do, one of them is going to be a powerlifter, not the other one. Listen, I you can clip this and send it to Meg, but I tell you right now, nobody is a bigger fan of Meg Scanlon than me. So go listen to we have two great podcast interviews with Meg Scanlon, plus a bunch of press conferences from all her competitions. Every time she speaks, you should be taking notes. Um, I, I, we don't say that Meg is the queen enough; she's the queen. So Meg is also the queen and strongest mom in the world. Period. End of story. No, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So, but I mean, bro, she's, she, she's going to hang it up one day. And with these young juniors, especially Joy, just aging into 63s, you know, maybe she'll eventually fill out the 69s and give us a shot at, uh, you know, taking down another weight class. Maybe we'll have Meg and Joy one day, one and two. But I, obviously Chelsea Savitt's in there and she's going to keep balling and she's still making progress. So anyway, we're just rambling at this point. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. Um, Julia, you got any final things? Yeah. I mean, you don't want to forget about like Celine too. She, she just came out. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. Damn. Uh, and and maybe got... me, if I ever am not injured one day. Oh, we but... got a 63 right over here on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget about Celine Crumb too. She's coming as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. That's going to be a crazy battle with her and Meg right off the top. Who's winning this year, Mike? Meg. Julia. I'm going to go with Meg. I'm, gonna I, go with, I'm not going like to make a Celine. choice, but everybody knows where my heart is, but I, I love Celine I like too. Celine. And Me too. She, I'm excited she, she, for her. She's a winner and she makes lifts, but like right yeah. now, Meg is just stronger. Meg is a lot of crazy, time, man. But at, the, at the moment, Meg is just a stronger lifter. Yeah. At the moment, also like. Meg is like making newbie games. It's, it's insane. Like she's just adding to her total so fast. I just want to see her break the world record that Corolla just set and break Corolla's bench world record and just own that weight class. And then right off into the sunset or whatever, be a master lifter and raise those two girls to be the next greatest power lifters and strongest moms in the world. All right. With that, we have really talked a lot. Um, I've been awake for like 27 straight hours or something crazy it's yeah, two same. in the morning 
two in the morning here. I got to go to sleep. I got to go check out the <laughs> gym here and see if it's still open for one of our <laughs> kids in the group chat. But uh, we'll go hit that up. But thank you to everyone who listens to Pop in America podcast. Thank you to everyone who jumped in here and asked um, questions or made comments. And we'll, I can almost for sure say that we're not going to do Monday Night Live next week because there's three sessions a day for like the next 11 days. Um, at junior, is, junior World the Raw start? The Raw starts on, let's see, we have a junior preview show here. It starts. Um, the 27th through the third. Okay. The 27th through the third equipped starts the 24th through the 27th. And then classic is um, also on the 27th and then through the third. So yeah, man. I mean, maybe we could, I could theoretically next Monday night, if we're able to get the software system set up, like do a Monday night live, which is a recap preview like an actual recap of the first couple of days and then preview of like the next day or something like that. Okay. Let's see. <clears throat> we just said that was the 24th. Let me see. Is that a Monday? M Monday. I'm talking about Monday, the 20 Monday would be the 28th. So it'd be like after the second day. Um, yeah. But right, we'll work on the timing later. We'll but. work on it, but um, I can tell you right now, we will be doing, we will be going live on this YouTube channel every morning, which will be like super late the night before lifting for you guys and back in the US. During the first sessions, weigh-ins, we'll be there <clears throat> doing a live pregame show. And then, so like Mike Gold, for you, like that'll be like 1 a.m. or something. You, if you're still up, you can join us on that. Julia, that'll be like 11, 11 p.m. your time. So if you want to join on that. And then we'll be doing post-competition press conferences at the end of every day here in Romania, which should be like, pretty reasonable times for you guys it should be like afternoon it should be like around this time basically like four o'clock three o'clock something like that for you guys so um we'll be doing all that stuff live if you're tuning in you're hearing this or you watch this after the fact show up for those live press conferences show up for those live pregame shows ask questions jump in we're, we're going to be asking the lifters obviously questions in the press conference if you want to ask questions we'll ask those questions for you and then yeah maybe monday after we wrap those press conferences do a quick little monday night live just to keep the streak alive uh, maybe do like just a quick hour and recap what we've seen so far and let Mike Gold and Julie Williams just take the mic and uh, let me just sit back and kick it for like an hour and a half because I'll be here. I probably won't be sleeping anyway, so we should be good. All right. With that, again, thank you everyone who tunes into these. Super awesome. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, make sure you subscribe to this so that you don't miss any of the stuff. Make sure you follow Powerlifting underscore America on Instagram. You'll always have all the updates for everything that we're doing. And thank you to Mike Gold and Julia Williams for all your amazing analysis, all your research. Julia is going to be dropping a couple of articles in the next few days. So thank you for doing that. Mike Gold also did research on those as well. So thank you both for all that hard work that you do. And make sure you tune in next time for Monday Night Live. With that, peace. We're out of here. <laughs>